ACC in Raleigh, North Carolina for the home opener for the Wolfpack at ACC Football is presented by your local Ford dealer. Raleigh, North Carolina, the site of our game, the first ever meeting between the Charleston Southern Buccaneers out of the Big South and the NC State Wolfpack, number 18 in the nation as the teams take the field. Carter Finley Stadium, the site of our game today. And it is so great to have you with us for our game in the ACC this afternoon. Tom Wormy along with James Bates. Lindsey Riley will join us in just a moment from the sidelines. James, to say that last week was a close call for NC State would be a complete understatement. A one-point win on the road at East Carolina. What we've heard from the coaches all week long and in our meetings yesterday, right, James? The words humility, humbled. Fortunate and thankful. Let's get after it today against Charleston Southern. Dave Dorn went as far to say, I said to my team, the worst thing that anybody can ever call you is an underachiever. And he's talking to a lot of guys, 17 returning starters, a lot of fifth year, six year guys out there that have played a lot of football and a lot of winning football. There are 10 starters that return on defense and way too many tackles missed last week. Last year, they were top five in the nation with fewest missed tackles. But when you've got guys like Tanner Engel that are pressing and missing tackles in the open field, which we've seen him do time and time again, just a perfect open field guy, a tough guy, you know something's a little wrong. Devin Leary wasn't Devin Leary, but at the end of the day, they they enter this week two at one and oh so they dodged a little bit of a bullet don't take anything away from that ecu team that's a good football team i expect them to go high powered today and look really good doing it. it's gonna be fun to watch and we should see a lot of weapons on display for this offense especially for nc state and one of those is at the receiver position and for more on that player down to the third member of our broadcast team on the sidelines today lindsey rowley Thanks so much, Tom. That's right, wide receiver Thayer Thomas. If you go back to his senior year in high school, he didn't have many offers for college football, had a few for college baseball, but then Coach Doran came to one of his games to actually watch his younger brother, Drake. He caught the attention of Coach Doran. Thayer told me he had one of the best games he's had in high school that night. Thayer ended up walking on to the football team at State after he arrived. He went over, knocked on the door of the baseball offices. Head coach Elliot Avent knew who Thayer was, asked him to work out and just like that, there was a two-sport athlete at State. Now, fast forward, Thayer actually ended up getting drafted by the Red Sox in 2019 in the 33rd round. Thayer told me he had some help making his decision whether to stay in college. That help came from Russell Wilson. Wilson was in a similar situ situation when he was at NC State when he got drafted for the Rockies. In the end, Thayer said football still had a special place in his heart and he wasn't ready to walk away from the game. Now here he is at his final year at NC State and will go down in history as one of the best wide receivers to ever wear a Wolfpack jersey. Guys? Lindsey certainly will with a touchdown grab last week and the one-point win against East Carolina and Thomas for his career 21 career touchdown receptions. That's tied for second in school history. So he is just one of the outstanding players in the lineup today for NC State. Um. Charleston Southern, James, won the toss and elected to defer. So NC State will start with the football. Martin is going to kick it off to Julian Gray. Deep for the pack. Buccaneers lost last Saturday at home against Western Carolina, 52-38. This is a short kick. Up near the 30, Jordan. Houston, the midfield, and he gets tripped up on the Charleston Southern side of the 50. So Vera had to make the tackle. 31 yards on the return for NC State. Well, Jordan Houston, they thought they'd kick it to a guy who's a little less dynamic and uh, hopefully get down there and cover. That wasn't the case. Jordan Houston doing a good job to set things up for Devin Leary. There he is, one of the best in the game of college football here this year coming in, preseason player of the year in the ACC. A, a fearless, fun guy to watch and look for him to get back on track and back in the group here this afternoon. 22nd career start for Leary. He'll throw it deep. Middle of the field floats it incomplete. He was looking for Chris Tootle, the sophomore from Wilmington, North Carolina. Not sure 
if he just let him way too much looked like maybe not quite on the same page there but I do like the thought process offensive coordinator Tim Becking they, they didn't have a have a many explosives big plays last week against the ECU and they're looking to make something happen make some noise today Leary's pass completed the 40 breaking tackles down to the 30 Devin Carter first down NC State at 18 yards Livingston made the tackle for Charleston Southern big 88 Devin Carter making his 35th start today and Leary and Carter look for that all day long if CSU is going to give them that much cushion nice easy pitch and catch move those chains on second down Once again to the air over the middle. That's complete total. Garrett Sega on the tackle, eight yards on the pass play. Garrett Sega, big time player in the middle, captain. They call him Pudge. Damage is done, though. Nice pickup by Tootle on first down. Tootle, of course, going to get a lot of reps today, along with Sebro. Trent Penix is injured. Look for him to be back this year, but not today. Houston around the edge inside the 10 yard line flag is out behind the play near the 24 yard line they got 12 on the run by Houston holding offense number 50 10 yard penalty second down that's big Grant Gibson and Gibson is the center right there in the middle going to get up and move and then he ends up well, it looked like Sega had a step on him, and he tackles him, so it's, it's a good play call. You don't get a whole lot of holding calls on the offensive line in this day and age, but when you tackle him out in space like that, uh, you're going to get flagged. So going backwards on this one for a second long now. There is pass, Sumo Kongbe. Out in the flat inside the 30, three yards on the play. He had 14 carries for 79 yards a week ago and a touchdown. It was a 24 yard run in the second quarter for Demi Sumo Kongbe, the sophomore from Willingboro, New Jersey. Yeah, both Sumo Kongbe and Jordan Houston good catching the ball out of the backfield. Sumo Kongbe, uh, he put on quite a show against ECU last week. Teammates call him Sharko. Starting this one here today. Those carries last week, the first of his career. Leary. Has the time, comes out of the pocket, floats one, and it's incomplete near the 12-yard line. Looking for Thayer Thomas, who did well to knock it away from the defender, Cameron Smith. You know, interesting, Tim Beck calling this offensive, this, this first drive here, it's to the air, to the air, to the air, and, and you get a feel that he's really trying to get his quarterback back into a rhythm. Devin Leary, he's great when he's lathered up, a little bit of a tempo and going. Christopher Dunn from 46 yards away, and he puts the pack on the board with his 70th career field goal, adding to his school record from 46 yards away from Christopher Dunn. Some, some nice little moments there for the first offensive drive of Dave Doran's Wolf Pack. The, the penalty so costly, the big holding penalty, and they were they really had this Buccaneer defense on their heels prior to that. And Devin Leary still just trying to get him kind of get him going, slinging that ball around. And it seems you, you think back some of the times last year, really seemed to be at his best when they they, they put the pedal to the metal, a little bit of tempo. Obviously, he's key. If they want to go where they expect to go preseason ranking of 13th in the nation, NC State. A lot of big expectations. Seven starters returning to that offense and 10 on this defense that we're getting ready to see. That number 13 ranking the highest in 47 years to start the season for NC State, working on a 12-game winning streak in home openers. They haven't lost since 2009. T.J. Ruff is the deep man. Smith kicks it away to Ruff. No return on this one. 
So Charleston Southern a week ago, James, lost at home against Western Carolina 52 to 38. Their quarterback, Ross Malmgren, was 30 of 45 and five touchdown passes. Yeah, but he was sacked five times. So they've got to do a better job of protecting the sophomore here today. And that's not going to be easy to do against the Wolfpack squad. They didn't have any sacks. So you know that's one of their big goals as they enter this game. So look for a lot of quick game out of this Buccaneer offense. You, you got a lot of quick game out of ECU last weekend. Part of the reason why they didn't have any sacks. Longgren's good. He's got some good ones behind him. They're looking for him to run the show today. Vincent Davis on the edge. That's four yards on the play. Derek Pitts Jr., graduate student for NC State, had the tackle number 24 in red, white, and black. Out of Dunbar, West Virginia. Kind of like his defensive coordinator. Tony Gibson is a West Virginia guy. One of many great coaches in the game from there. Seth Anderson. Six yards and a first down up to the 35-yard line for the Bucks. Well, that'll work. Get the ball to when they call Mr. Motivator. Yeah. Nice job timing there on the, the tight coverage, but just enough to move those chains in a fresh set of downs for the redshirt freshman from Swanee, Georgia. Malmgren did not see a lot of action last year. Only 30 snaps from scrimmage. Given the starting role this season, that's Vincent Davis. Spins away for seven yards. Second catch for Davis. Early minutes of the first quarter from Raleigh, North Carolina. The first ever meeting between these two programs. Charleston Southern out of the Big South. And their head coach, Archery Denson, in his fourth season. 12 and 15 in his career on the sideline for the Buccaneers. Still got that gold and blue on like the Notre Dame fighting Irish when he was a running back. Incomplete pass from Malmgren. Isaiah Moore providing the pressure. Number one for NC State. Yes, sir. Linebackers here, baby. They get after it. Coming on the blitz. Isaiah Moore, a three-time captain, and showing you why right there. They've been successful, Charleston, Charleston Southern, with the quick game. But you drop back there and, and expect this defensive line to just stay put. That's not going to happen. They're going to have to keep up with the quick game. And here they need three yards to move the chains. On third down for Charleston Southern. Flip it out to the left, and Davis! He's turned back. A loss of two. Tyler Baker Williams led the way for NC State and Cyrus Fagan. Yeah, they used to do the uh, the war chant, dun, 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 when that would happen. Cyrus Fagan started his career at FSU. Graduate transfer from Daytona Beach. Great job in the open field. Just, hey, you can complete them all day in front of me. I know where you're trying to get. Step up, make the play, get off the field. Good stop there for the defense. David Gelb is in the punt of Thayer Thomas. Ten thirty and counting here in our first quarter. Thomas wants the fair catch, ranges back to the 10-yard line, and they'll mark him right near the 11. 49 yards on the punt, and 4.4 seconds of hang time on the Buccaneer punt. ACC football is brought to you by your Georgia best Chevy dealers. Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Extend engine life. Increase fuel mileage. Available at AutoZone. And Green Machine. Available exclusively online at HomeDepot.com. The 56th season inside Carter Finley Stadium for this North Carolina State program, leading 3 0 on Christopher Dunn. Field goal from 46 yards away. Now, time for our Ford Keys to the Game with James Bates. All right, let's do it for Charleston Southern. Special someone, special teams, and you're going against a great special teams uh, team in NC State. So, you're going to have to find a way to help your offense out for NC State. Capitalize, not with the O, even though the Capitol building isn't <laughs> far from here, but just capitalize. Dave Doran's team, you get a turnover on defense, get some points out of that. Go score. You get good field position. You got to play complementary football, and we didn't see that last week. The passing complete. Keon Lassane 
Number 15 was the intended receiver, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Leary, in that previous drive that produced three points, was three of five through the air and hit three different receivers. Once again, it was Christopher Dunn making his 70th career field goal. That's a school record. 70 of 87 now for Dunn here at NC State. Little flip. Sumo. Just one. I was ready to really go with that, James. <laughs> well, first to the ground here, and, and I, I was ready, too, because he brought all kinds of excitement last year. Watch the 40 right there, punch. Boom, he gets he gets knocked down the middle linebacker for CSU. He won't get credited with the tackle right there, but he made that happen because he, he penetrated, he set the edge right there and made Sumo, Sumo turn back in third and long. Leary surveys the situation, goes to his right incomplete. Devin Carter, number 88, defended by Jeremiah McClendon. And so the punting unit onto the field for NC State. Zane Vance's defense, the defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers, getting a three and out after an outstanding punt by David Gelb. Flips the field a little bit. Charleston Southern able to move the football a little bit early on that opening drive in what looks to be have decent field position to start. Now this is one of the points that Coach Doran told us about. Shane McDonough and punting. He wanted more hang time. We will keep an eye on that for you. This is kind of a low liner. Fair catch made. Vincent Davis inside the 45. And 3.28 seconds of hang time. Not what Coach Doran told us he was looking for from his punter. He wanted four. Three-nothing lead over the visiting Buccaneers as we play in the first quarter. Time for our impact players brought to you by your local Toyota dealers with the Buccaneers on offense, James. All right, started with TJ Ruff. Not rough like Tuffy around here, but just rough. Are you FF? Redshirt freshman from Shelby, North Carolina. And decent week last week, a long of 23. Got some action as a freshman. Ran really well, actually, against the Georgia Bulldogs late in that game. They've got to be able to run it a little bit. They've got to make this defense fear that they're going to run it anyway. And there was a look on the other side. Corey Durden, they need more out of him. The big graduate transfer from FSU out of Newberry, Florida. Malmgren, complete, Davis. You know, here comes Tanner Engel. And, and Tanner Engel right there, number 10. And there's a look at Pitts as he walks by. But Tanner missed a couple tackles last week. He slows the receiver down here in this situation. But usually he takes those right angles and he's so sure in the open field. Maybe he's to ditch those gloves. He used to always wear just the bare hands out there. Here's second down. Quick release, incomplete. Caden Jordan, intended receiver on the sideline in front of his own bench. There's Tanner on the on the pass defense this time, doing a good job. Nice tight coverage and raking it away. Led the team in tackles last year. He leads them in plays with 776 coming into this one. And he and his Wolfpack D trying to get a stop and get off the field. Right here, Eng Engel from Dr. Phillips High School in the shadow of Universal Studios down there in Orlando, Florida. Let's see what they got on third down. They've got an incompletion and a turnover. They're going to have to kick it back to NC State. Tony Gibson, he hasn't had any sacks yet in this season. No sacks in this game, but a, a couple pressures and key. There you see Engel coming from his off spot and adds a little bit of pressure there to try to slow him down a little bit. There's Lee Matthews, left guard, the sophomore out of Palmetto, Florida, down by Bradenton. We'll have to punt it away again. Claire Thomas, the deep man for NC State. Gill, the graduate student, punts it away for the Bucks. Fair catch intended by Thomas near the 20. Let it bounce. And that'll roll just inside the five. So the punt by Gelb is 47 yards. 
deep in their own territory for Coach Doran and the Wolfpack. All right, so NC State takes over. Devin Leary at quarterback, and that brings us to our impact players brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Bring them out, bring them out. Come on, come on. Do I say it or do I wait for the graphic? I'm so nervous right now. Let's just wait. <laughs> we will hold okay, that okay, okay. for a moment. It's better with Chris. We will revisit that. Jordan Houston is the back to the right of Leary. Whistles as the play was initially snapped and a timeout taken by First Charleston charge. Southern. Timeout. So before that snap and the play for NC State, Autry Denson in his fourth year on the sideline for the Bucks wants a timeout. They've got a pin deep here in the first quarter, trailing 3 0. First quarter, that takes us to our impact players, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers with the pack on offense. Yeah, there we go. Let's do it. And let's start with Sharko, as they call him, Sumo Kongbang. At ECU, he had 14 carries, a 24 yard touchdown run, 22 yard run. Man, was he fun to watch on tape. Exciting to watch him do his thing here today. He's slick and slippery, and he's a nice one two <laughs> punch with Jordan Houston, who looked for him to play quite a bit as well, get that bad taste out of his mouth with the fumble near the goal line uh, going in at ECU last week. And Sega, we've seen Garrett Sega, the linebacker for the Bucks, quite active early, doing a great job, just as always there as you look at his numbers. They call him Pudge, and he decided to return late in the summer. So, you know, coming back for his, his graduate season, he's not in the best shape you'd like you'd want your middle linebacker to be because... Don't go through spring ball. Don't go through all those summer workouts. You might be working out a little bit, but not quite like you would if you're with the with the whole team. So as he gets back into shape, he's they're certainly looking for him to lead the team in tackles again. Had seven tackles and a tackle for loss, a fumble recovery against the fighting Kerwin Bells of Western Carolina in the loss last weekend to open the season. And James, you mentioned that this program took on Georgia at the end of the season last year. Now they lost that game, 56 to seven. But last year they also played. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, North Carolina State at the five yard line. Charleston Southern is charged with their first timeout. So we're being told there was a review during the break. They wanted to see if the ball hit an NC State player. Okay. So on this, on the punt, that was the previous punt. Okay, so that was Thayer Thomas who got away from the Jones. This is Houston on the rush. Just to finish that thought. Now, last year the Bucks played Georgia at the end of the season, right, James? They lost that game, understandably, to the national champs. I might add. They also played September 25th at East Carolina and lost 31-28. They led the Pirates 14-0 before the Pirates knew the Bucks were in town. Yeah, absolutely. They played ECU really well last year. And, you know, those Pirates looking pretty good this year. The NC State fans saw that last week. And here's a nice play to get out from the shadow of your own goalpost. Ten yards on the play to Julian Gray. One catch last week and one early in this one. And you had to think maybe that number eight might get a few more balls in this game. Great job after the catch. And look at Daryl Jones taking over number 11, just driving his guy out of there and blocking for his teammate, helping to move those sticks. From the 21 for NC State, back to the ground. Jordan Houston. Booksy Silvera made the tackle nine yards for Houston. Uh, this big offensive line just completely washes that defensive front. And here comes Houston with the vision, with the little slide step. And I think it's huge for number three to have a good day here today and get back into that rhythm. He was probably thinking he was going to be the, the star, the number one guy, and it will be a one-two punch. A lot of pats on the back for Sharko here this past week. They need number three all year, too. All day for Leary. Up to the 35-yard line. And that is first down yardage. Owusu forced him out of bounds. Six yards on the scamper by Leary. Here's Owusu from Irmo, South Carolina. And it's just his second start. 
with a first down for Devin Leary in this Wolfpack offense. They, they, they like to go down and put it in the paint here on this one. How about Leary last year with his 35 touchdown passes, setting a school record. Houston trying to bounce off tacklers, doesn't get far. Sherry Jefferson, number 30, first man on the scene, and a loss of three. Oh, 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 Cameron oh. Smith also yeah. there. Watch scary Sherry Jefferson. One arm while he blows up the blocker, the would-be blocker. That's Tootle, and with the other one, goes and tries to make the stop. I mean, that's the kind of penetration, and you've seen it out of 30. You've seen it already out of 40. These linebackers, they're hungry, and they get back there. They know their position and how to help out their teammates. Sideline and caught there, Thomas. Silvera forced him out five yards on the catch by Thomas. Last week, James, four catches, 58 yards, and a receiving touchdown in the first quarter in that 21 20 win against the Pirates of ECU. And Tom, that's just two guys that have just been pitching it and catching it for a long time together. Nice, nice timing route, getting it out there to him, and Silvera able to drop Thomas. Third and long, 0 for 2 on third down. Not this time. Into Buccaneer territory. Keon Lassane at 14 yards from Leary, and the sticks are rolling. Keon Lassane, his first start at ECU last weekend. Look at the pocket. Nobody anywhere around Devin Leary, and that'll help your quarterback get into a little bit of a rhythm, a little bit of a groove. Pack feeling pretty good right now, and he's throwing a pretty good ball, Tom. Sumo Kangbe is the back, just to the right of Leary. Play fake, pressure came, throw down field. Flags come out. Anthony Smith was the receiver. There was pressure right up the middle from Sega. Yeah, and Sega with the, the low hit on Leary. A little bit scary just when your quarterback's starting to Defense, number six, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's going to be called on Cameron Smith. And, hey, you know, you live to play another play. You, you know you're going to get beat. That's all you can do. It's actually a smart play. He got turned around. That cushion broke down, and he should have flipped those hips a lot sooner than that. And just live to play it again. And I'm glad that Leary's okay after taking that shot as he threw the ball. Just over five minutes to go in our first quarter. Sumo Kangbe down the sideline. Rumbles his way to a first down for the Wolfpack. Even though I shouldn't love it being a former linebacker, there, it's a thing of beauty, Tom, to watch these big boys on the offensive line just get up and move. And here at NC State, you'll see, you see all of them, even, even Gibson, the center, Grant Gibson, can get up and run. They all move so well. And as a running back, like Sumo Karnbe, it's got to be a great feeling to be running behind that big train. 15 yards, previous play, throw on the run to the 15. Another first down to the same. They got 12 on that pass play. Rolling out Leary. And you got to be careful. Cameron Smith, we saw Silvera just a few moments ago. If you're going to go after that ball, you better get it because you want to keep the lid on and at the very least get a tackle. Leary. It's too far in the back corner of the end zone. Last week, NC State was one for three in the red zone in the one-point win against ECU. Gray was the receiver in the back of the end zone for Leary who threw it away. Just over four minutes to go in our first quarter. A Christopher Dunn field goal, the only scoring so far. And we are now inside the red zone, brought to you by CPI Security, James. Tom, you mentioned the stat in the two times that they didn't get in. It was a, it was a goal line stand. They were stuffed on four downs, and, and then there was the uh, fumble in the fourth quarter. So they need to finish. Finish is a key word for this offense, especially here today. Flags are out. Jeff Knight is our referee for this afternoon's proceedings. 
here at Carter Finley Stadium. Right here is we're going to get Tootle. Looked like he just got going just a little bit too soon, and we, we had the holding call earlier as they were moving the football. And you know this one's not quite as big as that holding call, but still, just when you got everything going forward, you don't want to back it up a couple steps. Seymour Cotton back, 15. Forced out near the 13-yard line. Umbre Kennedy and Jeremiah McClendon combining to force him out after five yards. You've been waiting to say Umbre. Umbre. Ah, he's one bad Umbre. He's one mean Umbre. Look at Thayer coming back in. The crack block doing a good job of staying high. You can't cut in that situation anymore coming from the outside. And a nice job pursuing. And good angles by the defense to force a third down and 10 here. NC State was just 4 of 13 on third down last week. This is Leary taking off. Middle of the field, takes a couple of hits, driving to the goal line, and in for the touchdown! A determined and rugged run from Leary from 12 yards away. Well, they'll tell you that Devin Leary is really special when it comes to the behind the scenes leadership. This run right here is on display for the whole world to see. A design quarterback run right up the gut and he's not gonna be denied. And in the red zone, the Wolfpack finishing on that drive to make it 10 to nothing. Christopher Dunn now 174 of 174. Point after touchdown. Let's go down to Lindsay. Well, Bates, you sort of just touched on it, the behind-the-scenes leadership of Devin Leary. He certainly looks pretty comfortable here early. But speaking with Coach Doran yesterday, he said, you know, one of the things that's really impressed him about Leary has nothing to do with his play on the field. It's his behind-the-scenes leadership. Over the summer, he actually took Demi Sumo Karnbe under his wing to watch summer film. I got a chance to speak with Devin, and he told me he must have done a good job because by the end of summer, Demi was reaching out to him to watch film. But Coach Doran said, you can see it in the guy's eyes, the way they respect Devin and how they're willing to go to war for him. Tom? Lindsay, you're right. What a run, Bates. Bouncing off of Buccaneers on his way to the goal line and end zone. Yeah, and just to follow up, on what Lindsey was saying, that you know, a very unselfish guy. And these these college kids, they uh, you know, they're only human. They want their own, their free time. But uh, Devin Leary put all that extra time into his teammates, into his receivers, into the backs, like Sumo, just trying to get everybody better, a team player, and just oozing with confidence. Sometimes a little bit too much, but you needed it right there. No return from Ruff. Third career rushing touchdown for Devin Leary. That was impressive. And now we'll see if the Charleston Southern offense can respond. Leary threw a lot of TD passes last year, Bates. Not so much getting in the end zone with the feet, but he did it there. And he did it with toughness and strength and determination. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's what's fun about him. He's a, he's a fearless quarterback. And, you know, next time he's out there, I got a fun story to, to share that Tim Beck shared with us yesterday about that confidence. We're off on the run, swarmed, loss of two. Jalen Scott, number two for the pack. And you know what? Unfortunately for the young man, T.J. Ruff, I have a feeling that there's going to be a whole lot of this today. But you have to come back to it. You, you have to make them think that, hey, they can run it, and we can't give them 10 yards. We can't give them a freebie first down, letting them run it right up the middle. we got to keep an eye on that, that running back. they got to do it. That was the first rushing play of the game for Charleston Southern. Quarterback got hit. Ball's on the turf. Drake Thomas on the cover. The officials are saying that NC State has the football. The fumble recovered by the defense. NC State defense forced two turnovers last week. This hand looked to be coming forward. They'll review it. And the Buccaneers 
already charged with a review that didn't go their way earlier. There's Price with the big hit. The ruling on the field of a fumble recovered by the defense is under further review. Steve McBride is our replay official. Once again, you must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, which on the field is fumbled by Charleston Southern. Recovery by Drake Thomas at NC State. Uh, Trevally Price is the defender and does an excellent job of getting in there. And here comes this pressure. Tony Gibson calling for some sacks. More negative plays. They had zero sacks last week. Let's see if this turns into a, a sack and a fumble. A forced fumble or if it's just what I have is the third quarterback pressure of the game. And they have they've certainly put some pressure in the backfield and have penetrated the backfield of this CSU offense. And Dave Dorn looking for a sack here today after this review. You mentioned those interceptions, James. Tyler Baker Williams and Shaheen Battle had the picks last week against the Pirates in the 21-20 victory. Tyler Baker Williams was a was a nice play. It's, it's it's fun to watch guys. You can just tell they're playing exactly how they're coached. And Tyler Baker Williams on his the ball was underthrown a little bit, but he was just right there in phase, in good position. The receiver's eyes get big. He snapped that head around the ball, sitting there waiting on him. Fourth career interception for him. Trevally Bryce James, the redshirt freshman, with the play. From that other side is C.J. Clark, Ross Malmgren. And we started game two, the quarterback for CSU in 2019, broke his ankle early in the game, played almost a full half with the broken ankle, but went in at halftime and just swelled up, and, and he hadn't played much since then. After review, the quarterback had control of the ball with the hand moving forward. It is an incomplete pass. Third down. The official word from Jeff Knight. So there is no turnover or fumble from Malmgren. And all of a sudden, James, a light mist starting to fall here at Carter Finley Stadium. 75 degrees as we play. He doesn't care. <laughs> light breezes, 8 to 10 miles per hour. The humidity is up close to 90%. Lindsey Rowley can attest to that down on the sidelines. Buck's got to be careful here. Starting to get a little bit wet. You dodged a bullet. And no fumble right there. Be safe. Don't turn it over here deep in your own territory. Be careful. Don't force it. Third and long. Incomplete as it hits the turf. TJ Ruff was the receiver. Fourth down for the Buccaneers. Tanner Ingle back there, the senior from Orlando, Florida part of this highly decorated linebacker crew for NC State. Missing Peyton Wilson today. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer. It's a, I like watching 11 run. You, really, you were really bummed out not being able to watch Peyton Wilson. I was. He, you know, I, I think he would have gone if, if, if they felt like they had to have him, but Drake Thomas and Isaiah Moore, that's, that's a pretty good backup. And Wilson. Missed all the two games last year. That was a close call there. And a flag is out on the Gelb punt. 45 yards with over four seconds of hang time. There is a penalty marker. That got Harry back there around Gelb. They tried to rip his shirt off, James. Well, the, you know, and it's it's a it's a punt block unit, Tom. That they've had success. They've had success, so you know they. So they're gonna be hungry. They want to go get another one. They know how it feels. They get blood in the water, into the kicker, so to speak. Defense number 95. The penalty has declined. First down. So, so very upset, Autry Denson and company, on that Charleston Southern side because it, it's it wouldn't have given them the first down. It, had it had it been a personal foul, roughing the kicker. And, and that's what he's arguing because it's you know you've got to protect that punter's leg. It's you know he's he's exposed and here they run into him. And this is remember last week a punt block for a touchdown. The last game of what ended up being the last game of last year against North Carolina punt block for a touchdown. 
I believe the number is five games this special teams unit has scored for NC State going back to last year. So they're like the sharks in the water. They smell that blood, they want some more, but you can't cost your team. You talk about getting lucky there. The couple penalties already that have kind of like stalled some drives. And, you know, had that one been a big one that gave CSU a, a first down, they would have heard about it at halftime uh, from Coach Dorn. Leary, secure pocket, incomplete pass. We were talking about their effort, James, last week on special teams. Josiah Provillon, who is normally a receiver, had the block of a punt late in the first quarter against DCU, and it was recovered by Sean Brown in the end zone to get those points on the board. They also had the two interceptions, so the defensive effort last week was exactly what they needed to win that game against East Carolina. Todd Goldberg, the special teams coordinator, done a fantastic job. Sumo Kongbe. First down, NC State. 44-yard line. Nick Perry on the tackle and 11 yards for Sumo. Well, watch 50, Grant Gibson. Right there, just driving his guy out of the picture. Already earned his degree in business administration. Strictly business running things right there. That NC State offensive line. Four carries for 32 yards for Kong Bay. Trying to add to it across midfield. Another first down near the 40-yard line. Demi Sumo Kong Bay. Kennedy and Silvera on the tackle in 14 yards. This time, not only is it that big offensive line, but it's the guys on the perimeter. Let's watch them inside first. There they are, the big bodies getting up and going. Look at them banging. That's Tim McKay, who had a great week last week. Expected to see him a lot more. Already getting involved. And then the receivers finishing the play and staying on their blocks. And that's how you get the big hitters. That's how you get those 25-yard runs like we saw Sumo Kong Bay. Uh, Kong Bay get last week. They got a block on the perimeter, and they sure were right there. Demarcus Jones, number 28 on the carry. A modest gain, officially no gain on the play for Jones. As NC State is working on a 10-game home winning streak, second longest in school history. Their last loss at home, James, November 6th, 2020, against Miami, 44-41. The school record is 16 games in a row at home. Dave Doran has now been here 10 years. Amazing. How about that? I asked him about that immediate day. He shook his head, couldn't believe it. Was in a little bit of disbelief last week as well as they escaped Greenville, North Carolina. That's 12 yards on the run. Demarcus Jones getting into the act for the pack. Gain of 12 yards. And Demarcus. Another sophomore, so you've got a junior in Houston, a sophomore in Demi Sumo Kongbe. And here on the draw, and a nice job by the offensive line. Again, really owning the middle of that field right now in the running game. Leary on target near the 26-yard line. Devin Carter, the junior, from Clayton, North Carolina. Cameron Smith on the tackle at six yards to Carter. No, but, but one thing Charleston Southern has done, and, and when you're in these types of games, you have to make these offenses earn it. Make them chip away and work their way down the field. That's where you can get more mistakes that come around. Fortunately for NC, NC State, there haven't been too many to start this first quarter. I know it, it's all. Oh, what's that, girl? You're ready for the second quarter? Well, guess what? It's coming back right after this. NC State up 10 to nothing. And nothing. It's time for our first quarter stats, and they're brought to you by the Georgia Drives Chevy Dealers. Yeah, and on top of all of this, you look at time of possession. How about this? NC State had the ball over 11 minutes, under four minutes for Charleston Southern. Zero of three on third downs. And the CSU needs to find a way to stay on the field. Pretty good job by the defense to get off. On second and six, feeling the pressure, got it away. Down by the five. Flag comes out. Was that picked off near the goal line yeah. by Kennedy? Out near that five-yard line. The ball appeared to ricochet. Now the penalties, the indication the penalty is going to be against Charleston Southern. Yeah, James. and it came late. It's, I think they're going to call. Yeah, he's early. It's 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 a good call. It's you know it's an unfortunate break for Charleston Southern. 
Pass interference. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, so you think you're going to get the football. Instead, you give them 15 yards closer to the end zone and just too early playing catch up. And a good job. When you're beat, you put your head down and you just try to get involved, get in the thick of it. But running into the body right there and, and, and interfering with the pass, Booksy Silvera is flagged on the play. And you know, and right there, here they're going back to Tootle. It, it just shows you, you know, Penix uh, was looking to be such a big part of this offense. Hopefully he gets healthy here soon. Houston weaving his way, spinning and diving. Eight yards on the run, Jordan Houston. A good problem to have for a football team for an offensive coordinator when you've got competition, healthy competition at any position, especially at that running back position. And you got to go over there and sit and watch your other guy be successful. Hey, you love it, but you also want to be the guy carrying the rock, and that's what you're seeing right there. Nice hard run by Jordan Houston. Whistles before the snap. Flag is out. Leary, by the way. All star offense number 52. Five yard penalty. Second down. Come on, Timmy McKay. We're trying to brag on you, big man. <laughs> 315 pound sophomore. Coach was really fired up about the way he played at tackle last week against ECU. And said we'd see him quite a bit here today. And we've already seen him do some good things, but. This has got to be corrected. These little penalties, they may seem little, but to, but to kill the momentum when you've got a defense on their heels, costly, costly, especially as you get deep into this season. Houston. Trying to follow his blocks down near the goal line. About the two-yard line for Jordan Houston. Silvera, Bell in on the tackle, two yards. Leary, by the way, 73 yards passing using six different receivers in the first quarter as Houston comes to the sidelines. Leary with the rushing touchdown for his coach Dave Doran. 12-yard run of the first quarter. Sumo Kongbe in there on that fourth down that was stuffed the goal line stand last week. There's a third and inches now. Two for four on third down. And running it in is Leary. Second rushing touchdown of the game from two yards out. This one a little bit easier than touchdown number one, huh? Just reading that end, and he collapses down trying to stop what he thought was the running back with the football and an easy trot into the end zone for big number 13. Done for the extra point. Certain things in life are automatic. That's one of them. Second rushing TD of the game for Devin Leary. Came into the game with two in his career. 17-0 NC State. ACC football is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. The Works Nitro. Available at worksnitro.com. And Wrangler. For the ride of life. Devin Leary, long distance phone call on the sideline. A couple of short runs, 12 yards and two yards. He's calling New Jersey. <laughs> Sicklerville, New Jersey. All right. You ready? You I'm want ready. A, you want a head ball? Lay it on start? me, baby. All right. Come Five on. star drive summary. Shoot. Brought to you by Yellowwood. Believe me, it doesn't have a yellow tag on it. You don't want it. Here we go. Take a look at it. Devin Leary capping it off with his second touchdown run of the game. Nine plays, eight up, 419 on that clock. And well, they had the ball for over 11 minutes in that first quarter alone. And you mentioned it earlier, too, Tom. This is fourth career rushing touchdown. He's not a speed demon, but he's definitely crafty and hungry enough to hurt you and, and buy himself some time when it comes to throwing that football. And James, what did Tim Beck tell us, the offensive coordinator for NC State? Leary tried to win the Heisman in one game, and it didn't work last week. They did win the game, 21-20. He looks a lot more composed, confident. Now, granted, it is a step down slightly in competition to the football championship subdivision in Charleston Southern out of the Big South. 
but you're looking to build confidence early on in the season with the home opener. Yeah, but careful with that confidence, not too much. And, you know, it was very interesting. Tim Beck said to us, he said a couple weeks ago in camp, he threw a football and he tried to put it over a linebacker where he shouldn't. It was the wrong read. And he said, what are you doing? And he said, I can make that throw, Coach. He said, when I heard that, I knew that we had a little bit of trouble, that we had to reel it back in. Yeah, you can make that throw maybe 50% of the time, but that's not the right read. It's, it's kind of like in Karate Kid when Bobby's like, when Sensei tells him he wants him out of commission, he's like, but Sensei, I can beat this guy. I want him out of commission. Incomplete from Malmgren, looking for Seth Anderson. Then Johnny comes and tells him to sweep the leg. Man, what a mess. You're the best around. Nothing's gonna ever keep you down. <laughs> that ain't a good theme song for Devin Leary, too. Might have to look at that for his walk-up song. How's that? They are Tom. Sounds pretty walk -up. good, Bates. Yeah, I like it. Ross Malmgren's looking for a completion. He's misfired in his last five. Out of that bucket in the pocket. They'll try the ground The TJ Ruff. Unsuccessfully. Loss of five, Drake Thomas, 32 in red and white. Well, high praise from defensive coordinator Tim Gibson. Look at that. He, he's getting held by the face mask, rips through it, and able to get upfield. And even again, if he doesn't make that tackle, there's nowhere to go for the back but into a sea of white hats. But Drake Thomas strong enough to hold him off and to drop him. There's his brother waiting to get the ball back in his hands. If, Drake and the defense can get off the field here on third down and 15 now. Love the Drake. First team all ACC last season. 0 for 3 on third down. Malmrum got hit. Incomplete pass. Anderson, the intended receiver. Fourth down, Buccaneers. Yeah, and guess who? Doing it on the ground, and this time with the blitz just a little bit late. Malmrum lucky to get rid of that one. Drake Thomas, the captain. Drake's the captain. Isaiah Moore's a captain. And then if you've you just joined us, Peyton Wilson, not available for this game with the injured shoulder. I hope he gets healthy and stays healthy when he gets back out there. But a good job by his teammates here today. Yeah, you know, Wilson's fought knee injury, James, in 17 and 18. Hopefully he'll have. A speedy return. This is Thayer Thomas trying to run it wide. Breaks the tackle across midfield and to the 45. How's that for complimentary football? Brother goes out there and makes some plays. A little bit of fight in little brother as well. 17 to nothing right now, Wolfpack. Charleston Southern. I'm Lindsay Riley down on the sidelines. Well, the Thomas brothers have already had a huge impact here today. Thayer Thomas just actually got his team good field position. I spoke with Thayer earlier this week and he said it's been amazing playing with his brother on the same team. The boys are from Raleigh, so they're able to have their family come to a lot of the games. I also spoke with Drake and he was telling me it's kind of like a dream come true to be able to play with his brother. He said it wasn't really in the plans. They didn't design it that way, but they couldn't be happier. It kind of made me laugh. I asked Drake if he had to pick one guy on the Wolfpack offense he wouldn't want to face. He laughed a little bit and said, actually, I'd have to say it's my brother, but don't tell him. <laughs> I like it. Well, his older brother, but he is littler brother. I know I called him the little brother, Lindsay, as we uh, went to break there. But the graduate player student Thayer Thomas and just a junior Drake. And guess what? Baby brother, little brother Lex Thomas, a quarterback going to have all these positions covered, has committed to play for NC State. So a, a future player here wearing the red, their dad, played at Marshall. He's an offensive line coach back at their high school. So all in the family, Lindsey. Leary launches it. Carter was well covered. Cameron Smith, closest defender. And again, Charleston Southern making sure they keep a lid on it. It's, you know, don't give up those explosives. Make them earn their way down the field. And still, NC State would like to have a few of those in their back pocket. They, they haven't had the big explosion play. Really set this stadium alight here. Get them going, get them all fired up. 
with 12.01 left here in this second quarter. They're still going to try to hit those deep threats. Good job. He's keeping the lid on right now and not giving up the big play. Leary, touch on that one. Houston. Houston on the run. Down to the 25 yard line. Ombre Kennedy on the tackle. First down pack. Yeah, I believe it's Jordan Livingston out here, the defensive back. <laughs> yeah, look at him. How'd you like to be that dude? He's 170 pounds and he's got two big, bad offensive linemen. Take your pick. Oh, man. They just ate him up out there, leading the way. These backs, man, they got to like that escort that they get every time when they those linemen get outside the block for them. 23 yards, previous play. Throw to the end zone. Back to the end zone catch. Jordan Houston. 24 yards and a Wolfpack TD. Houston lined up right there in the backfield. Little play flake. Fake, they slip him out. Wheel route. Uh-uh. If you're late there, you're, you're not going to stop Jordan Houston, especially when that ball's thrown perfectly by Devin Leary. And how about that for the big play that they're looking for through the air to number three. Nothing, James. Wolfpack in the first half. Houston, we don't have any problems here. We're looking pretty good right now. Up 24 to nothing here in the second quarter. Evan Leary, 24 yards in the first receiving TD of his career for Jordan Houston. And now Leary has two rushing TDs and a passing TD just a moment ago. Ten completions for the game for Leary. Seven different receivers. 47 yards on the drive, less than a minute, James. Spreading it around, and he finds the guy who was a track star in his youth, and one of the fastest kids in the country, We're talking 10 years old. Just a blazer, and when he gets out there on that wheel route and the linebacker forgets about it, it's over. 24 to nothing, Wolfpack. Trying to win their 13th straight home opener. No return from the Bucks. And we have a message now from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro. Powerful tools for any project. With gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. So the batteries for NC State fully charged. The Bucks looking to get some traction. They are 0-1 on the season. Lost last Saturday to Western Carolina. That was a home game in North Charleston. South Carolina. It's got to feel a little frustrating. You know, like when your, your cord on your iPhone doesn't quite work, but you need a lot of juice. That's where that defense has to feel right there. <laughs> this offense needs some first downs. They got to give them a breather. No breather. Nope. Surrendered. Nope. Ingle. Nothing on the play. Kale Anderson made the catch. Ingle up in his grill. No rest for the weary, I guess. Pressure was coming. Get rid of the football. The completion is there, but not much to show for it. Good in the open field, getting back to what he does best. In his 31st start here, fifth season for Tanner Engel. Enjoyed watching him play. Watched him ever since he was a, a freshman. No gloves. Baumgren gets rid of it at the 30. Connects with the receiver, Caden Jordan. Sure-handed, the junior. In Tampa, Florida has a first down and the first catch for Caden Jordan. That's all you need. He had a catch for 55 yards last week. Does a good job of setting up shop right in that zone, middle of that zone where the chains are. Here he's again. Nice grab over the middle right near the Tuffy logo. Ingle stopped him. 16 yards on the pass from Malmgren. There is a flag way behind oh, the play. Call? There is no foul in the play. No, there isn't. Tom. I take that back. <laughs> I stand. I sit corrected. There was one, but it, uh, they're not going to do anything with it. How about that? Well, there you go. Back to back first downs. This is what you needed. You just, you know, well, Autry Denson uh, again. You know, well, I thought there was a flag, and I didn't see it. But perhaps it was Malmgren hit as he let go of the football. He's been he's been popped a few times. 
and all within the rules. I didn't see it that time. Denson sure seemed to think differently. But nonetheless, his offense, back-to-back -back first downs and back-to-back -back receptions for Caden Jordan. 16 yards on the previous play. Mountain again on loads. Too far for the receiver. Flag is out. NC State had a chance at it as well. There's a flag to sort out. That's Devin Boykin. Pass interference. Defense number three. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Here you go. That's Aiden White, the corner out there. And you know, again, it's it's the, the cushion. When that cushion, when that cushion breaks down to about Two and a half yards. You better already be turning those hips. If I'm, if I'm even, I'm leaving as a wide receiver. And you know, again, Aiden White knew that. And we said it earlier for CSU. This time, he's just saving a touchdown. So a smart play. More with the pressure. Now I'm got it away and complete. Yeah, a little bit of a hold on Moore as he tried to break free. He was through there in a hurry. And luckily for Malvin and this Buck offense. Durden as well, James in pursuit. Here you see Moore from his linebacker spot. And Matthews hanging on tight. No flag, no foul, I guess. Again, that time not even one on the ground. There he is, Isaiah Moore. 44 start here today. His degree in the summer of 2021 in communication. Played only six games a season ago because of a knee injury. Racked at full force defensively for NC State. Yeah, he was six tackles, a tackle for loss, and the opener last weekend. That was deflected. Passed by Mountain deflected. Drake Thomas with a piece of that one. See, coming in, Isaiah Moore was lined up wide and came off the edge. And there you see these cornerbacks, these defensive backs, locking down these receivers both sides. Nothing for Malvin except for that turf. Incomplete. Let's see if they can get their first third down conversion of the day. And let's see what Tony Gibson draws up here on a third down and 10. A roll for four on third down for the Bucks. No flags, 0 for 5. Sadly, Anderson couldn't catch up with that one from Malmgren. Derek Pitts Jr. in coverage. Andre Denson's team is facing a fourth down. Yeah. Clay Custer, the offensive coordinator, and Andre Denson leaving him out there. Careful NC State. Jumping off sides won't give you a, won't give him a first down, but still it'll cut it in half. So. Hold your water and know where they're trying to break those routes off at. Right at the 25-yard line. Know where you are on that football field. Be smart defensively. Keep them in front of you. 5 of 16 a year ago on fourth down. For the Bucks. the pressure, the pocket collapses. Malmgren had defenders draped all over him, including Savion Jackson. Yeah, they bring the blitz this time, and Savion Jackson and company just getting to him. Malmgren, nowhere to go but the turf. A few times too many on that track. Autry Denson's team trails 24-0 here in the second quarter. There was heavy contact around Malmgren. Well, you see there. Just the, the one finger face mask pulled down by Savion Jackson is Autry Denson has been in the ear of the officials the entire break because there you see it right there and you know it's it could have been called but missed by this officiating crew and so instead of a first down with a penalty flag it's a turnover on downs and a nice stand on fourth down with the pressure by Savion Jackson. For NC State, Savion wearing that big number nine, which means a lot around these parts. Mario Williams, Bradley Chubb, both first rounders to wear that number nine in their playing days here in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
So that was a fourth and ten play for Autry Denson's team. A turnover on downs to Devin Leary at NC State. Two rushing TDs and a passing TD for Devin Leary. It's now 53 career TD passes for Leary, sixth in school history. And he is approaching 6,000 career yards passing. Sumo Kangbe. First down. We'll drag a couple of defenders for the ride for 15 yards. Nick Bartalo on the play for Charleston Southern defensively. Sumo Kangbe played in six games last year, all on special teams, just on special teams. And Dave Doran, he was fired up about the way in that ECU game in the opener. He continues to give his all on special teams. Said he ran through two blocks, went and made a tackle. You know, when you've got your starters out there competing and scrapping to win in that third phase of the game, it sets up for a, a good atmosphere in this football team in this locker room. He's got another carry. His seventh is a flag out behind the play as he fights his way inside the 40. It would be first down yardage, 11 yards. Again, there is a penalty marker back at the 44 of NC State. It looks like holding. Holding. Offense number 50, 10 yard penalty, first down. All on sixth year center, Grant Gibson. He's a third year captain as well, along with Isaiah Moore. That's the first time in school history they've had two three year captains, but he's flagged for the infraction. Yeah, and it's, it's a shame, too, because he certainly didn't have I any. Mean, he's the bigger body. All he's got to do is just kind of run that, that, that would be tackle up the field. The ball's already past him, but instead he tackles him. Costs his team some momentum. It's first down and 20 now. Sumo Kanga. Head on collision at about the 48 yard line, nine yards on the run. Out of that pistol look as a middle linebacker, you're, you're taught so many times in that run game, you know, your, your first responsibility is the run. So if I'm the middle linebacker, I, I've got to make sure they're not running the football, but I'm also reading that first step of the back. When he's lined up directly behind the quarterback, like in this pistol situation right here, it's tough to get that first step with him because you can't see him as clearly. Leary tried to pitch it forward to Tootle. Right at midfield, Nick Perry was pressing the issue for Charleston Southern. We're being told, James, this could be ruled incomplete, and there's the evidence of it. Yeah. You know, but just to finish up at that, at that middle linebacker spot, so much of your first step, not taking a false step, and if you if you get off the spot, we'll take a look at this. I mean. I, I'm happy to offer my opinion on this one right away, James. Incomplete. Yeah, save us some time, huh? But <laughs> I'm just, just saying. But I get to talk linebacker play for a second while they look at it. Okay. You know, and, and Dave Doran, he'll tell you this too. But, you know, and so that initial step is so important for a linebacker. Like, I wasn't a, a really fast runner, but I played a lot of racquetball and grew up in a football family with a dad who's always getting linebacker here. So I was didn't take false steps and got off the spot as they hear this is going to be. Like, listen to my story, not this review. <laughs> but and so so that's what I prided myself in because if you get off on that the spot and take a, a correct angle, these big offensive linemen, no matter how good they are, they're not going to be able to get to. You. And and so that first step is important. But when you're in a pistol look. It drives you crazy because, you know, you're trying to look around that quarterback and you can't, you have to wait a beat. And and then that offensive line, it gives that offensive line a little bit more time. Kind of like Wake with that delayed mesh would be a big trouble too for a linebacker. That pass is completed the 45-yard line. Julian Gray on a toss from Leary. And that is first down yardage, 11 yards after the previous play was ruled incomplete. That's a completion for Leary. Julian Gray, catch number two here in this one. And one catch was a nice play last week against the Pirates. And the win, the win that sure feels good here today as we near halftime. 1-0 football team looking to go to 2-0 before the Texas Tech Red Raiders come blowing into town. 
Marcus Jones for a yard. James, you did mention Wake Forest a moment ago. Good to see Sam Hartman is back yes. in the lineup after some medical issues with blood clots. And so they're taking on Vanderbilt today. That's a road game for Wake after beating VMI in the first week of the season. Duke and Northwestern are going head-to-head -head as well. Duke had an early lead in that one, so we'll keep an eye. Ten and two so far, non-conference for the ACC yeah. to start this Saturday. They've been doing it with some good quarterback play, and it just got better with Hartman back. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Leary in trouble, out of trouble. Heaves it to the goal line, and caught for the touchdown. Anthony Smith going up to get it, 40 yards on the play. You wanted some explosive plays? Well, you've got some explosion plays, and it starts with your quarterback refusing to go down, making the blitzer miss. I mean, a open shot for the defender. Could have dropped Devin Leary right there, but he's not having it. By some time, launches it up there, and Smith, there's your big play that you've been looking for. First, you hit the Houston with the wheel round 24-yarder, and now a 40-yarder through the air. 6.31 to go in the second quarter and a 31-0 lead. Sets it up and launches it. And, you know, as a defensive back, Cameron Smith, when you're beat, you've got to just put that head down and find a way to get there. He continued to kind of look into that backfield to see if Leary was going to launch it up there. And by the time he did, it was already there, but it did hang up there for what seemed like a little while. Devin Leary, two on the ground, and now two through the air. Just over three minutes on that drive. Smith with the TD catch, his third of his NC State career to make it 31 nothing. Rushes of 12 and two yards for Leary in the first and second quarters, and then the two TD passes. So now he's up to 54 career touchdown passes for Devin Leary. Through 35 last year, James, 27 against the ACC. That was the best of any quarterback last year in the conference. And that's saying something in the conference of quarterbacks. Yeah. And, you know, and what really says something is 35 touchdowns. So, yeah, he can go win you a game, but only five interceptions, which means he doesn't lose you the game. He takes care of that football. Six times for Leary, 300 or more yards in a game passing last season. And last week he threw for 211. Well, we have a moment. Let's get a message from Wrangler. It's in all of us. The courage to go all in. Wrangler for the ride of life. <laughs> Roller skating and riding horses. It looked like a scene from One Tree Hill. I thought I was going to see Tom Wormy there what a reporting great show on the scene. Oh. You're not in that commercial. Are you in that regular commercial? No, I'm not in the commercial. <laughs> If I was, I'd expect a residual check. Okay. But well, you really would have pumped it up. I know. Kind we like told you, yep, yeah, we told you it's the first ever meeting yeah. between the programs. 2016, Charleston Southern went to Florida State and lost that game. That was their last ACC opponent. We told you they played two teams out of the football bowl subdivision a season ago in East Carolina and Georgia. Vincent Davis on the catch. The Bucks have never beaten an FBS team, James. 0 and 25. Well, Tariq Pitts does a good job here to shed his blocker, and then they were they were bringing some bodies and a good job to get rid of that ball by Mongren. And, you know, if, if you see this backup quarterback for NC State, Jack Chambers, here in the second half, it's a, he's a guy who's seen a couple FBS teams on the road with Charleston Southern to add to that standard. Anderson on the catch, four yards. Davin Van, 45 in red. Watch out. See, it, here's, here's the deal. When you can't run the football, him faking that run 
it's it, you know I mean it just gives the defense an extra step towards the quarterback why even bother faking it if they know you're not going to run it you're not fooling anybody so might as well just drop back and throw the football a play action pass isn't fooling them right now. 0 for 5 on third down. This one threads between defenders and caught. Seth Anderson up there, the 44 yard line. Nice job. They go to Mr. Motivator, the redshirt freshman, at eight catches, two touchdowns against Western Carolina to move those chains. That previous play, James, was 16 yards, longest play of the game for. The Charleston Southern offense, J.D. Moore, gets nothing on that attempt. No, but, but again, it's a... Uh, put the parrot on my shoulder. It's, <laughs> as silly as it seems, you, you got it, you got it. You cannot go away from the running game. And, you know, both offensively and defensively, you know that. You, you shut down, you make a team one-dimensional. Even if you make it where they can't pass it, they got to run it. That's what makes things easy. Yeah, that's more was the back. The pass complete to Anderson. That's right near midfield. Pitts on the coverage as we go down to Lindsay. Guys, I spoke with Ross Melengram and Seth Anderson earlier this week. They definitely both have a lot of respect for each other. Ross told me that they worked together a lot this summer, and he thinks it really helped to improve their connection on the field. Seth told me he puts a lot of pressure on himself, works hard to get open because he knows if he can create a little space, Ross is going to get the ball to him. All right, Lindsey, well, let's see if they can get it to him here with just four yards needed for the first third down conversion of the afternoon. Under four minutes left to go in the first half. Flag is out. So you had movement on the offensive side of the ball, but was he was he forced off sides by the defender? Did the defender come across and draw him off sides? A lot of movement back there. False start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Machine Strand, the transfer from VMI. And man, that's that's a costly one. Audrey Henson knows it. This, you know, trying to do something, get something going. And there you see the movement from NC State, but it was just that, just a little movement. You know, it wasn't like it was orchestrated either. Like you watch that Pitt-West Virginia game in week four. There was, there was some movement going on trying to draw those West Virginia offensive linemen off sides. And it worked a lot, but they finally got flagged for it. So now it's third and long. Benson was right Second in the ear of the official. He wants a timeout. So the 45-year-old from Lauder Hill, Florida, calls a timeout. All-time leading rusher at Notre Dame, James. 4,318 yards, first in school history. And the MVP of the 99 Gator Bowl on the losing team. Played four bowl games. I had a chance to talk to him for about a half an hour at the media day for the Big South, which was in Charlotte. And he, he talked about things way beyond football because Charleston Southern is all about fellowship and Christian values. It's a very understated campus. It's a special player that goes to Charleston Southern to play football for Andre Denson. And what a special opportunity. You know, a lot of times you end up living where you go to school. It would be a bad life to live in Charleston, South Carolina. What a beautiful, beautiful city. Autry Denson certainly knows that. And leans on us as he recruits these guys from all over, including guys like Ryan White, the captain of Severe of Tennessee. Oh boy. They were four and six last year, three and four in the Big South. Now I'm going to buy a little time into a highly congested area, and Cyrus Fagan almost had an interception. Cyrus losing the chance to go sign that bone, the go bone. celebrate. You know, last time we were here, two years ago, we didn't call a game here in Raleigh last season, but last couple years ago, remember they were going through that drought, 19 over into 2020, where they, man, they couldn't buy an interception. Also, it was all the noon games and all the love of like, man, <laughs> the coach right. is playing five o'clock somewhere, but now, no, they've been they've been finding a way to pick off that ball for their defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson, these days. Would have liked to have had that one. Thomas has this one. Head of steam. Sideline. Midfield on the return. He just wound it up and let it go. Thomas cutting it loose. 44 on the punt. 
And 27 yards on the return. Harper made the tackle in special teams for Charleston Southern. He's just so aggressive when he gets that ball in his hands. And look at all his buddies. All these blocks up the field. Excellent job. Let me make sure I give a shout out to 33 here. Jackson De Silva, the wide receiver. And James number five is our hearty star to watch. Performance last week for Thomas, 58 yards receiving and a touchdown in the first quarter. Okay, let me, let me make sure I take care of our guy here. That's five. Number five. Right there. <laughs> you know, we get the brothers brothers mixed up. That's all right. They're both playmakers. Bayer and Drake. Leary trying to make a play. Improvising down at the 30, elevating for the grab. Anthony Smith, who has the TD catch in the game. There's a flag on the play. Holding offense number 54. 10 yard penalty. First down. 6 penalties against NC State so far this afternoon. Well, Tom about 3 or 4 on that offensive line. You see Gary just you know, being able to throw that ball as he you know, he launches into the air kind of a, an awkward throw but he can be able to put the touch on it and put it in there. Doesn't matter though cuz we're going back the other way with another holding call on the offensive line. Mims on the carry for five yards. So the rushing game, James for NC State, up over 130 yards in this game against Charleston Southern. That was a bit of a weakness last year. 126 yards per game on the ground, 13th in the conference for NC State. Receiver adjusting to the football at the 45. What about Porter Rooks? Ten yards. A, a nice job adjusting. Go back and find that football. Look it in. But as you see here, too, a good job by Larry. He couldn't lead him too much because that ball might have been intercepted, so he put it kind of only where he could in that zone. First catch for Rooks. That one gets rifled down to the 35-yard line to Thayer Thomas. First out, NC State. Ten yards. Again, look at the protection. See, you don't need to hold, guys. You're holding your own. You don't need to hold them. Get it, get it going and keep it going. You keep that gas pedal down and have a little bit of fun out there. Going to that halftime locker room. Get jazzed for the second half. Don't get in there and get yelled at a little bit for too many flags. Got to keep it cool. Keep it clean, right? 164 career receptions for Thayer Thomas as they go to the ground with Mims. Trying to fight his way all the way to the whistle. Now flags are out near that Charleston Southern bench area. There was activity well out of bounds. Lawson Cook is number 25 for the Bucks. Uh, Cook's got to be smarter than that. You know, originally watch 32 get in there and, and get a piece and then you know you, you know where you are on the field. It, it's, it's frustrating. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 25, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. This yeah. offense doesn't need any help. Yeah. <laughs> you saw Darius Bell get hold of his yeah. teammate at the end yeah. of the play and say, we, we don't need that, certainly. Right. Bell had the initial lick there on the NC State player. Start by wrapping up. It was a nice job to get there from the second spot. One sixteen left in this half. Just giving a freebie away with the penalty to help out Leary in the pack offense. On the cusp of the red zone, Leary directs some traffic. Now floats one down by the goal line. The Sane was down there. I don't know, James. Not sure about that one. Just trying to get rid of it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, by the time, you look at the great protection up front. Plenty of time for Leary. Here's going to come some late pressure. Just avoiding that sack, throwing it out there. 
couldn't throw it off to his left. There was no receiver out there, so that would have been a penalty. Two for two in the red zone of the game for NC State. After the documented struggles a week ago against DCU. A one point win. All you need is 1-0 on the ledger. This little pass to Mims. Looking for the end zone. Front left corner. And he's in for the pack. see a running back happy for NC State like that after a big old play, it, you better believe there's going to be a big offensive lineman down the field. This time it's Dylan McMahon leading the way for Mims. McMahon, the sophomore from Savannah, just getting up and getting all the way down the field to just bury guys after that first wave got him. So Mims, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, on the business end of the pass, 20 yards on the play, and the touchdown for NC State. Nice play call there, too. You know, it's been a long half for this defense of CSU. Tim Beck calling a little screen there with those big guys trying to turn and burn and make a play and those big guys it's all you can ask of them on the defensive front to just put some pressure on that quarterback that's why the floodgates open nice little touch by O'Leary and then Mims doing the rest third TD pass of the game for Devin Leary and five total a couple of rushing touchdowns to start the game for Leary 58 seconds to go in the second quarter. The TD pass of 20 yards. The TD passes, James, of 24, 40, and 20. Just a moment ago to Mims. The return from Ruff. He's up to 211 yards. That's what he threw for in the entire game against East Carolina last week. Had a touchdown. What could have been a costly late interception, that led to a field goal attempt for East Carolina from 41 yards away with five seconds left that the Pirates missed, and they had missed the previous extra point. And there's your final score, 21-20. Yeah, it's just, that is not like Devin Leary to throw that ball. So able to, you know, not just get back into a rhythm today, but to spread the ball around. I mean, how many different receivers, Freddie, have we seen catch balls today. Eight, nine, ten. Ten different receivers in the first half. So sharing the love offensively. <laughs> there ain't no love from Tony Gibson's defense. Those dogs will hunt. They continue to hunt. So glad that you've been with us for ACC football for our first half from Raleigh. Tom Worby, James Bates, member of the Florida National Championship team in 96, and Lindsey Raleigh on the sidelines. It's a first down play for the Bucks. Our outstanding ACC football production crew with you from Carter Finley Stadium. The 129th season of football for NC State in their home opener. Well on their way to their 13th straight home opening victory. And 10 and 0. If the score holds into the second half for Dave Dorn and home openers in his career here in Raleigh. Uh, you talk about this wonderful crew, Tom, and one member of our crew, longtime team member, not with us here today, uh, hoping to have him back soon, is, is Warner Manning. Uh, get well soon, buddy. We miss you. Hopefully you're watching us. Our crew is off to Chestnut Hill next week for Maine and Boston College, a prime time start at Alumni Stadium. Jeff Halfley's team at Boston College involved in the only conference game this week against Virginia Tech today. And is in Blacksburg, and that will be the final play of the second quarter. The first half of this game owned by Devin Leary and NC State. How about five TDs? Three through the air, two on the ground for number 13, the junior from Sicklerville, New Jersey, as they 
Hightail it into the locker room. After the first 30 minutes of play. 38 to nothing. Montre Denson will have some words of inspiration for his team at halftime looking for their first ever win against the football bowl subdivision team. It will be an uphill climb to say the least in the second half for the Charleston Southern Buccaneers who are 0 for 1 of the season. Let's go down to Lindsey Raleigh. Thanks, Tom. Coach Devin Leary, two rushing touchdowns, three through the air. What have you thought of your quarterback so far? Showing off his legs, you know. Yeah, he's playing good. It's kind of what we would hope we'd see from him. He's doing what Coach Beck's asked him to do. He's giving the ball to his playmakers. He looks in rhythm. One of the things you talked to me about, you want to see better tackling out of your team this week. What have you thought so far? It's been pretty clean. Yeah, a lot better than last week. I mean, completely different than last week. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Guys. Man, he's fired up, isn't he? Huh? I'm ready to go. Let's go. 38 to nothing. Hey, you got to be feeling pretty good. Hopefully there's a smile back in that locker room after the game. Second half coming up, as well as halftime festivities. All back in this first half. 38 to nothing. Leary, part of four touchdowns there in that first half. Two on the ground to match his career high coming in. 38 to nothing. Charleston Southern's got some work to do in the second. Toyota dealers from Raleigh, North Carolina. Carter Finley Stadium, the home opener for the Wolfpack, and they dominated that first half. 38 to nothing is the halftime lead. Let's go around the league and check out some other scores. Miami is one of five teams ranked James in the ACC this week. Yeah, and looking pretty good against Southern Miss. How about the Dukies? Duke on top of Northwestern. Northwestern with that huge win to start the college football season in Dublin over Nebraska. And Duke looking strong again here in week two. They're in the third quarter. Sam Hartman's back. The 23rd ranked Wake Forest taking it to the... The, the boat rowers, as we used to call them, the, the Commodores there at Vanderbilt. And how about North Carolina after that wild game last week against Appalachian State, which they won, trying to stay undefeated on the season. And they've got a great freshman quarterback as well in Drake May. Yeah, they got to be careful scheduling some of the, you know, to go to App State, you know, to go to ECU. Those, that's a tough game to have on your schedule for these football teams. But fortunately for both teams, they both came out 1-0 and in close ones. Okay, so Devin Leary is one of the classic class of quarterbacks that we have this week and it seems like every season we have outstanding quarterbacks in this league these are just a few to take a look at we've got Devin Leary in our game Sam Hartman returns from a medical situation to play for Wake Tyler Van Dyke so impressive for Miami and we saw Brennan Armstrong last week yeah and I mean and that's just because we can only fit four on this graphic I'm guessing look at Tyler Van Dyke looking just like Michael Rappaport but he, he looks like the best quarterback <laughs> in the league at times when you look at back there big and strong in that pocket so good to have Hartman back you know what Devin Leary can do we we saw Brennan Armstrong live with the new offense, Tony Elliott's and Des Kitchings last week at Virginia. And Robert and I, his old offensive coordinator that put up all those numbers, but also had him throwing it 70 times a game last year, has moved on to Syracuse, where he get, takes a guy like Garrett Schrader. And Schrader had a great first game against Louisville, the win there. I mean, you go on and on. Malik Cunningham, uh, Drake May. Uh, right. yeah, I, <laughs> this, and that's what makes for good, fun football. Anymore, you have to have a good quarterback to be successful. You just have to. And we sure have him in the ACC. Yeah, and Cunningham had a clutch run for a touchdown yesterday in the win against Central Florida. And Drake May was the quarterback of the week and the freshman of the week last week in the ACC. And he's already thrown for two touchdowns in their game today. 38-0 on the Toyota Halftime Report. This is Driven. Dave Dorn, presented by your local Toyota dealers. Can you believe that 10 years have gone by? No. Because we remember you came into the league, and, you know, it's, it's yeah. let's establish more tradition here at NC State, and here you are a decade later. Yeah, I'm fortunate. You know, I think in this profession, um, I think I'm eighth in longevity now in the, in the sport for the college football landscape. I'm second in the school history, so I feel very fortunate to have that opportunity and thankful that NC State wanted me to stay that long, and it's a great place to live, and the people are phenomenal. And we want to bring something to this fan base that they haven't had in 42 years. So the mission isn't accomplished yet. And 
Hopefully this is the year that we can get that done. Your longevity, your success, what does it say about the environment in Raleigh, North Carolina and NC State? Uh, the culture is really good, and, and it's not just in the locker room. We're the only staff that had all 10 assistants return. We had very few players leave our roster in the offseason, and a lot of players returned that didn't have to. So it's a good place to work. It's a good place to play, and, and our fans have done a tremendous job supporting the student-athletes. So game day is something that's unique for us right now. Tell me how last year was sort of a, a valid moment perhaps with all the great success you had and the win against Clemson and everything where we've been working so hard for this and we finally were able to achieve something like that. Yeah, you know, I think there were some milestones met last year, being undefeated at home first time in 35 years, beating UNC, uh, Florida State, Clemson and Louisville all in the same season that hadn't happened in school history. And, you know, coming up with a way to finally win that game against Clemson, a, a great team, uh, Davo and his staff and their team is and the gold standard, you know, and we've had some great games, but haven't gotten it done. So getting over the hump there was a huge, huge thing for our team's psyche, I think. Do you like the fact that a lot of people are talking NC State football based on what you did last year and yeah. the expectations for this season? Or would you rather just do your own thing? Yeah, we're going to use that as a coach. Like, if you think we stink, then we're going to use that. But we have high expectations every year. Like, you know, we don't go in the team room and say, guys, we're going 8-5 and five this year, you know? Like, Which is good. I mean, no, yeah. we go in there and say, let's go win every game. You know, and let's try to win this thing. And that hasn't changed. It's just now the public thinks that we can do it. So we got to get it done. We haven't won it yet. And it's fun to be in this position. We're excited about the opportunity. We also know that none of those things you guys say about us equal wins. And we got to earn it. Driven, Dave Dorn is presented by your local Toyota dealers. The all-new 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. Toyota Halftime Report, presented by your local Toyota dealers. 38-0 is the Wolfpack lead. Devin Leary involved in five separate scoring plays. And James, it's been all pack in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, and doing it with his legs as well. He got it going on the ground. You know, Devin Leary will tell you, you never go broke taking a profit. Nothing there. Don't force it. Boom. Couple yards on the ground. Just chipping away. The offense able to get into a little bit of a rhythm. You heard Dave Doran talk about that going into the halftime locker room with Lindsey Rowley. And that paying off and paying off for this nice run. And if this is your quarterback, you think that doesn't fire up the entire team, not just your offense, not just your offensive line, the defense, the special teams. When you've got a guy that's supposed to be the star, putting it all on the line like that, and then able to throw it like this, the nice wheel route to Jordan Houston, his first down uh, touchdown catch of his career from 24 yards out. You like 24 yards out, then you're going to love 40 yards out. That's what you got with that touchdown to Smith, and here's a nice screen pass for touchdown number three through the air from Leary, and this one goes to Mims. This is why I'm hot, and this is why the score is 38 to nothing at halftime, NC State. These are our first half stats brought to you by Bear. And keep in mind, Leary now up to 55 career TD passes. Yeah, Bear is a paint. They've been painting this field up and down, bright red, feeling a little bit better. But look, there in lies the rub. The penalty, got to cut down on the penalties in the second half. Clean it up a little bit. You're doing good on third down. The second half is straight ahead. We thank you for watching the Toyota Halftime Report. Back up 38-0 before we start the third quarter. We go down to the sidelines and Lindsey Radley. Thanks, Tom. Just moments ago, I got a chance to speak with Charleston, Charleston Southern's head coach, Audrey Denson. I asked him, Coach, what is NC State doing that really is challenging your team? And he said, first and foremost, he said he feels that NC State wants it more. He wants to see the effort take a step forward for his team here in the second half. And he said, you know, in the first half, I feel like our guys played a couple of snaps, but he said he wants to see a much, much better effort here in the second. Guys? Well, it's, it's consistency, it's defensively keeping those guys in front, which, you know, remember earlier on our, our call earlier this week, Tom, with Coach Vance, the defensive coordinator, it's like, you know, we, good play, good play, boom, they hit you with that big one, and it's, it's easier said than done, you know, but they got to get right back to keeping NC State in front of them, and have something go their way. Move those chains that they started to do. It wasn't until late in that first half, but they started to do it offensively. Let's see if they can start it with this opening drive of the second half on offense. 
86 yards of total offense in the first half for Charleston Southern. They had four rush attempts for zero yards. NC State had 344 yards of total offense. 133 on the ground, and Leary threw for 211 in those three TD passes. Crank it up the second half, start of the third quarter. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Lindsey Rowley on the sidelines, and our outstanding ACC football production crew with you. Here in Raleigh, North Carolina, you'll hear us say this from time to time this season, but this is the 39th year of Valley Sports South, Raycom Sports, and your regional sports networks presenting ACC football. And James and I and Lindsey, proud to be a part of it. Up near the 30-yard line for the Bucks. He got six yards on that first down play. Derek Pitts. I enjoy watching his, his hustle. Right there, number 24 from that corner spot. You know, you got to be able to cover, but you also have to be physical when called upon and shedding that block on and making a play. There he does it again. Oh. Second effort, first down. Nice job by Roderick Hawkins. He had one carry in the loss to Western Carolina last week. And talking up my man, Pitts a little bit too early. Puts that head down and that didn't look as tough right there. Roderick running hard, moving those chains, but here comes a flag. Pitts had six tackles in the first half. Fall start, offense number 57, five yard penalty, first down. All these stories with, with these players, Roderick Hawkins, you, you look down, you know, TJ Ruff is, is the featured back here coming in. And, but Roderick Hawkins is a sophomore out of Tyler, Texas, East Texas. Goes to Tyler High School, then Tyler Junior College, and Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, and now off to Charleston. Just, just the, the route that some of these guys take to get to where they are is interesting. Complete to Vincent Davis. Got blasted but hung on to the football. Eight catches for Davis in the game. Certain bright spot for Charleston Southern. Trailing 38 to nothing early stages of our third quarter. NC State went 7-0 at home a season ago. That's complete on the edge. Caden Jordan. 7-0 for the Pac James for the first time since 1986 and just the sixth time in school history for NC State to go undefeated at home. It appears that they're well on their way to their first home victory of 2022 as well. Caden Jordan on his way to the sidelines as his helmet popped off after that big lick by Tanner Engel. Great job of reacting and going and making that tackle in open space. A little bit of confusion down there on that defensive front right now. No nope. big hit on the quarterback. Malmgren lost his helmet, went down in a heap, and the ball squirted away. And the indication is that NC State has the football. If that's what it looks like pre-snap when everybody's got their hands up, like, what am I supposed to do right here? Hey, then that'll work. Man, were they coming, and finally they get the big lick. This time it's from Tyler Baker Williams from his safety spot who had the interception last week against ECU. And this is a CSU offensive line that gave up six sacks last week to Western Carolina. They've had their quarterback pressured quite a bit today, but unable to drop him. Tyler Baker Williams and company, but they finally get to him and they just opened up the floodgates and it looked to be like a, a little bit of momentum going the way of the Buccaneers to open up the second half, but not anymore after a play like that. That was a loss of 13 yards. Leary stepping up, throwing to the end zone. Back to the end zone, touchdown grab. the catch for the pack at 27 yards. Again, nice protection for Leary to step up into this pocket. And Toodle just the back of the end zone and not bad coverage either. 
Tootle at six foot four goes up and gets it. That ball dropped in there perfectly for him by Devin Leary. So Leary with his fourth fourth TD pass of the game and that ties his career for a single game. Career best. They're going to take a look at it. Back of the end zone, Tootle. And I love the play call by Tim Beck. You know, it's a sudden change for that defense. They were expecting to have a couple more plays before they had to go out there. And watch that ball, and it doesn't even seem to move at all. So this play will stand. But Tim Beck, hey, let's go up top. You know, after that sudden change, it's nice when you get those defenders out there not expecting to be out there that early. And see if you can pop a big one on them. That's what you get right there with 29 in the back of the end zone. After the beautifully thrown ball by Devin Leary. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So the touchdown confirmed for the Wolfpack. Fifth career TD catch for Tootle. 44 0. Extra point pending, Christopher Dunn. Hey, Tom, what was my key for NC State? Capitalize. That's right, and that's what that is right there after the turnover. They capitalize, and it pays off. Devin Leary, the NC State Wolfpack, has a 45 0 lead in the second half against Charleston Southern. Very special guest has joined us in the booth. Fourth year athletic director here at NC State, Boo Corrigan. Boo, thank you so much for your time and impressive showing so far from the Wolfpack. Well, at this point, you guys are invited back whenever you want. <laughs> thank, thank you for having me. Appreciate that. Okay, so last week, let's address that. Close shave, but you come out with the victory, and the coaching staff told us we're humbled by what happened last week, but we're excited about the rest of the season. Well, I think the biggest thing is you leave one and out. Right, and that, that's the end of it. You, you know, you leave one and know. We know our coaches are going to work with them. We know our players are committed to doing the right things, and that, that's the escape route. Come back one and know feels a whole lot better Sunday morning. Well, we saw you when you first got to campus about four years ago. Since then, pretty much most of the run, the last three years, there went more ACC titles than, than any school, any athletic department. Congratulations for that. And with that come the awards. Congratulations also on Athletic Director of the Year. Uh, it's very nice. It, it, is a, it is a group honor, right? I mean, I refuse to look at it and say, look at what I did. Because without good people around you, without great coaches and great students, none of it's possible. But you know what? We got a pretty good vibe right now. You know, we really do, and everyone's bought in and feel really good about where we are. You got a good vibe this weekend here as you try to move to 2-0 on the football field with your football program. I'll bet it's been a fun summer building up to this season, uh, the highest ranking in, in about 50 years in preseason, and you've got Dave Doran 10 years now, which is hard to believe, and all these returning guys. It, it's always fun in the fall when you're winning football games, isn't it? And, and I think it really speaks to the culture that Dave's built, right? I mean, he's had time. we stuck with him. We've had the same coaching staff we've been we've been together for for three years and I think it, it makes you want to be a part of it so Charleston Southern with the ball here in the third quarter second and seven Boo Corrigan the athletic director for NC State has joined us kind enough to give us some of his time during a football Saturday the home opener so much success in openers this season but I want to ask you in this time of so much change across the landscape of college football, of college athletics for that matter, and with your connection, your family connection to the ACC, the strength of this conference moving forward and specifically for NC State. Well, I think what we all of us owe back is to be as good as we can be, right? Where is our investment? Where are we spending time? Where are we putting our efforts? And, and be as competitive as we can be, both within the league as well as nationally. Let a big third down and seven go, and there you go. Somebody's going to sign that turnover. <laughs> oh, uh, Tony Gibson, who he likes to talk about those dogs on defense, and he's, he's, he's had them heating it up up front on the quarterbacks and therefore causing turnovers like this one right here. Here's a nice interception. Tyler Baker-Williams, second interception in as many games, James. 
Had one against East Carolina last week. And the pack has the football back on the turnover. Well, how about we can't let you get out of here without talking college football playoffs. The committee chair, so, you know, no rest for the weary. You're, you're going to be doing a lot of traveling back and forth. But tell us about, you know, j just these last few weeks when we finally learned everybody else, the public, maybe expanding in the next couple of years to a 12, 12 playoff system. Yeah. So it's interesting. So the committee that I'm on is the, the actual selection committee. What we worry about is making sure we've got the right four teams, making sure we've got the right 25. There's a whole another management committee that's dealing with the expansion piece of what it is. But, you know, we get to sit around and talk football, yeah. you, you know, week after week after week. And, be, and uh, the other 12 members of the committee, and we're in there, and we're watching games, and we're talking about it. Statistically, we have all the information that we need in and around it. But, you know, for six consecutive weekends, for, for uh, Sunday through uh, Tuesday, all we're talking is football. What a, what a great job to have, right? <laughs> I'll say. And, and why, what for you personally, what's, what's one reason why you really feel like this is a great way to go for the future of college football, to add those extra teams? Well, as, as the AD at NC State, not, not as the chair of that committee, but as the AD at NC State, it, it provides other opportunities, right? When you look at statistically, uh, you know, about 1%, 2%, with the four teams getting in, of all people that pay college football, all of a sudden that number goes to eight or nine percent. It just it opens the apparatus a little bit for us and the, the opportunity for people to play for a national championship. Well, Boo, we thank you so much for your time and being such gracious hosts as usual here in Raleigh. It is always a privilege for us to travel to Carter Friendly Stadium to call Wolfpack football. Well, games. We, we appreciate it. I'd be uh, remiss not to mention Annabelle Myers and the job that she does and with, with everyone when they come in. So yeah, we appreciate it. Incredible you. support staff, and uh, we're always happy to be here at Carter Friendly Stadium. And congratulations on what we think will be the result today against Charleston Southern and two and and moving forward, good things for this football program. Go back. All right. Boo Corrigan, the fourth year athletic director here at NC State, kind enough to join us here in the third quarter. And we thank him very much. Chambers, the backup quarterback, is in. Jack Chambers, who spent the last few seasons at Charleston Southern and led the Big South in total offense a season ago, James, with the Buccaneers. I actually went to the walkthrough yesterday, the practice that NC State had, and, and Annabelle Myers, who Boo Corrigan just spoke of, the uh, sports information director here for NC State, introduced me to Jack Chambers. I talked to him for a while. What a great kid. Really enjoyed that visit with the graduate transfer from Charleston Southern. This is 45 yards away. Done. Money. Two for two in the game. 45 yards and a 46 for Dunn. 48 nothing. Wolfpack. ACC football is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. CPI Security, home security that protects what matters most and Yellowwood. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. NC State has scored on seven straight possessions, and just a moment ago it was the second made field goal on as many attempts for Christopher Dunn. And that takes us right to our Discover the Best, brought to you by the Fresh Market, involves Thayer Thomas climbing the rankings in career TD receptions here at NC State. And oh, by the way, the guy at the top, Tory Holt, was his high school coach. I wonder if he ever thought back then when he's catching those balls in high school and learning from one of the greats. He'd be up there at the heels, just on the heels of the great Tory Holt. That eight touchdown catches last season. Couple of catches in the game for 14 yards for Thomas so far this afternoon. Four TD tosses by Devin Leary. He's throwing TD passes to Houston, Toodle, Mims, Smith. Spread it around. Spreading the wealth. No return on the kickoff. As we check in with Lindsey with more up there, Thomas. Well, Bates, as you said, Tory Holt did coach Thayer Thomas in high school. I spoke with Thayer earlier this week. He told me that they still stay in touch. Holt actually has two daughters who play soccer at NC State. Thayer said last week he was in the training room after practice. And his old coach came by to say hi and wish him luck on the upcoming game. Love it. Not far from home and 
their dad who played his football at Marshall is an offensive line coach on that staff as we mentioned earlier Lindsay the little brothers the quarterback there you know a lot of times Tom you get like oh well, NC State where they've got quite a pipeline from this Charlotte school or they've got no oh, man this school down in Florida they used to be Auburn used to go down to Dillard High School down in Fort Lauderdale they used to have a ton of guys from Dillard oh what a pipeline but they've got the pipeline with the family it's not just a school it's a whole family they've got all these athletes and a pretty good family tree and man they've had a lot to do with these winning seasons under Dave Doran never go against the family baits <laughs> Pass complete to Davis. NC State had not played a Big South opponent since 2009 when they beat Gardner Webb here at home 45 14. Their last FCS opponent was last season, mid September at home against Furman, and a 45 7 victory for NC State, which last year went 9 3 and 6 and 2 in conference play. Unfortunately, their bowl game against UCLA was canceled, the Holiday Bowl. Had nothing to do with NC State for certain. That's the one thing that Coach Doran told us, James. They've gone so long without actually playing a game. And the build up to that ECU game, and it, it just didn't go as the game plan might have gone for them in Greenville, North Carolina. But as everyone is saying, you want to know, and that's what you were trying to achieve on the road in Greenville. Well, you hadn't had much success. You'd lost three of the four games at ECU prior to last Saturday. And this is a very talented ECU team. Look for them to win a lot of football games this year. Very athletic and very physical defensively. You know, when you go into that hornet's nest, like we talked about North Carolina going to App State last week, and they've got that target on you all summer long, look out. But right now, these guys are looking pretty good, looking to move to 2-0 before Texas Tech comes to town. The home opener at Carter Finley Stadium. Dave Dorn has never lost one, and it appears he will go 10-0 in home openers. Four touchdown passes by Devin Leary. And that takes us to our game summary, brought to you by Green Machine, Bates. Well, and the thing that stands out the most to me, and, the, you know, the turnovers now have started to come into play as Charleston Southern has turned it over twice, but they're also turning it over by not being able to stay on the field with those third downs. Only one of ten, and it's not just... Charleston Southern's inability, but it's this Wolfpack getting after it for their defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson. So Leary now with 56 career TD passes. That is sixth on the all-time list. So looks to be done for the day. And his 22nd start, Devin Leary after quite the first half and a little bit of change into the second. And as we mentioned earlier, here comes a guy who played for two and a half years there in Charleston, South Carolina, Jack Chambers. And don't forget Leary, limited action James in the COVID season of 2020, played just four games after sustaining a leg injury. So making his way back through last season when they went nine and three. Had the win against Clemson in double overtime. Leary threw four TD passes in that one too, and two in the overtime periods against the Tigers, who at the time were number nine in late September, 27-21. Last year, a banner season for NC State. Could this year be even better, James? And I would point to a particular date on the schedule. That's gonna be a first down. I know nobody looks past Texas Tech. They've got UConn after that. And then October 1st on the road, Clemson, South Carolina. Yeah, and that has turned into quite the clash of the Titans. And that will be must-see TV to watch that one. And, and you've got to stay healthy. 
you, you, you talked about Devin Leary and his injury a couple years ago. How about the injuries to this defense last year? There's a nice job penetration. And able to drop Mims. This CSU defense, did they knock it out, Tom? Yes, they did. How about that? Continuing to trailing. fight. Yeah, yes. despite trailing. 48 0, knocking that one free, separating ball carrier from football. Look, Sherry Jefferson out of Orlando Edgewater, an excellent high school program down there in Orlando, Florida. He's made some big plays with penetration in the backfield a couple times here today. And he's back there involved in this one. And look at these guys continuing to fight. Cherry's the first one back there. Ball comes out. And here you give your offense a chance. We're going to take a look at it. It's Siobhan Fields forcing the, recovering the fumble, rather. Review is underway. Let's see what we can see here. Balls out, balls out. So this is, this should stand as a fumble. Look like Sega in there to help with the hit as well. Sega and Jefferson combining on that stop. And we got to take care of Anton Williams, a graduate and player for CSU from Mariana, Florida, over in the panhandle. So the NC State home winning streak in all likelihood is going to go to 11 games. Now that's fifth longest in the football bowl subdivision. The Clemson Tigers, who we told you, NC State goes on the road to play Clemson this year in a few weeks. The Clemson Tigers have won 34 in a row at home, James. It's probably going to be 35. They are taking on Furman today. So just put that in perspective. I mean, 34 in a row. After review, the rolling on the field stands. First down, Charleston's up. All right, well, this is an NC State defense. Make no mistake, yeah, you're right. It's probably going to move to 2-0 and right here in, in, what is it, 11 straight at home? Yes. It's, but this right here means everything to this team in this locker room. Every time you get in these situations, these guys that are backing up a lot of the starters, it's on them to preserve that goose egg. You don't want anybody to come in and score against you if, you if they don't have to. So a big series right here for both sides. Over the middle, that's incomplete. Three defenders in the vicinity for NC State. You know, the, these backups in there now, you know, guys like Betty, like Boykin, uh, they're really high on a lot of these guys. Guys like Caden Fordham, a redshirt freshman from Ponte Vedra, Florida, went to Bowles High School, or the Bowles School, as they call it. But his dad, Todd, played at FSU, played 10 years in the NFL as an offensive lineman. Coach Gibson said, I can't wait to watch him play a lot tomorrow. There he is, 41. Anderson on the reception. Pitts defending. It's five catches for Anderson. Anderson, they were talking about his toughness the other day. He played his whole senior season with a stress fracture in his foot. All right, so sudden change for this defense. They do pretty good on the first couple snaps. Let's see if they can get off the field here. Pass behind the receiver. It was Anderson who couldn't get to that one. Too far behind him. It's going to be fourth down for Charleston Southern. They go on the road next week against Eastern Kentucky. And their first big South game will be October 8th at Campbell. That's about 30 miles south of where we are right now. Babish, 41 yards away. Boom. 48 yards officially on the field goal. Sam Babish 
who made a 50-yarder last week against Western Carolina. It was 6 of 12 last season. There goes that shutout. I'm not sure. Oh. Oh, they, they, they wanted it as much as that defense, didn't they? You know, great kick. Man, had plenty of leg right down the middle. Let's get it down to Rowley. We're talking about Seth Anderson earlier and how he had that stress factor his whole senior year. The coaching staff said, man, they knew he was fast, but then when he was healthy, they couldn't believe how fast he was. I guess it runs in the family considering Seth's father is Flipper Anderson, who played in the NFL in 1989. Flipper was playing for the Rams and set the record for most receiving yards in a single game with 336. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Yeah, we've talked about a lot of bloodlines here. That, that, that is just craziness. Great stuff, Lindsey Riley. And, and you know what was funny is his, his offensive coordinator, Clay Coster, he said, we said, tell us a little bit more about Seth. He said, well, this may sound weird, but he's got a great smile. And I get it. I mean, it's nice when you, you got someone who's always got a nice smile on their face. Happy people. It's good to be around happy, positive people. And he, many more years to play there, Seth Anderson, just a freshman. Gray to receive for NC State. Leading 48 to 3. Fair catch made. 7.35 to go in the third. Well, we have a moment, a message from Green Machine. With our 62-volt battery-powered blower in your hands, you are a machine. So power the machine with Green Machine. Available online at homedepot.com. I wish my voice was like that, Bates. I wish Home I had Depot. a Green Depot. Machine blower. Wow. <laughs> the green Machine. Yeah. It's the red machine today, Bates. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's a, uh, a machine. I mean, look at this. With, with 7.30 left in the third quarter, you know, and you've got a chance to rest a lot of those starters. And, you know, we, we mentioned Penix. He'll, it'll be a while, it sounds like, before he gets back. But probably a team that's going to have linebacker Wilson back next week. And hopefully he can stay healthy. And, you know, it's hopefully a team that you need, you need some luck. When you, you know, these these championship seasons, these, these seasons that when you're successful, you need luck in college football. That's all there is to it. I mean, look at the luck that they had last weekend to win that game, the missed extra point and the missed field goal. Uh, but you'll take it. Okay, so you're 1-0. But as much as that, you need to stay healthy. And they'll move the chains right here on a second down. Nice little zip on that ball from Jack Chambers. And, and, you know, a lot of times it's just things that you cannot control. And in that kind of, that kind of is what leads up to these coaches. It's, it's, there's nothing that's easy on these coaches anymore, but the decision, I think, in two-a-days, how physical are you going to be? How many times are we going to tackle guys to the ground and go full speed? You're only allowed a couple scrimmages as it is. Nice hard running by Jones there, Demarcus Jones, the sophomore. But, you know, we talked about it with Dave Doran, and he said, we'll look at it last year. You know, we've got, by the end of the year, six starters on defense that, that were done for the season. All of these injuries that have built up the last couple of years. So now, on top of that, you've got great experience. So, of course, you're going to rest them a little bit, not try to bang them up too much during two-a-days. But therein lies the rub. As Chambers is dropped as he tries to get to that first down stick. A nice job there. Again, penetration by Sherry Jefferson. So what happens, you get to a, a, a game like an ECU game, and you know you're going to get physical smash mouth game, but you haven't had a ton of it in camp because you're trying to stay healthy. You're trying to get through camp with healthy bodies. Wow, and, and so, I mean, what do you do? And just all you can do is say, hey, we're lucky to come out of there with a win, learn our lesson, and know what it takes to win football games in college football, week in and week out. I don't care who you're playing. 
Now they did make some plays in that game. Chambers unable to make a play on that one. There will be no gain. They blocked a punt late in the first quarter, James. That resulted in a touchdown covered in the end zone. And they had a couple of interceptions as well. And that's six straight games with an interception last week. Going back to last year, Laron Davis is down for Charleston Southern. So they'll attend to him with 5.13 to go in the third. Yeah, Laron Davis, a redshirt freshman. And just as we're talking about some of these injuries, you hate to see one there for Autry Denson's team. And there he is, 92 in the middle, pursuing that ball and just really runs into his own player, runs into his lower body there. Hopefully, Laron Davis is okay. Out of Daytona Beach, Mainland, that's where Vince Carter plays his high school ball. Mm. NC State built a 38-0 halftime lead. Charleston Southern able to get on the board with a field goal here in the second half. They struggled through the 20 season like everybody else. In fact, played in the spring of 21, only four games for the program and four and six last year in total. Yeah, pick tied for third in the preseason poll. Good to see here. Yeah, as Davis has helped up. Oh, he's going off under his own strength. Okay. Good sign. This program made the FCS playoffs, James, back in 2016. Lost in the first round to Wofford out of the Southern Conference by a point. Two times they've been champs of the Big South. Out of the football championship subdivision. And it appears, according to Boo Corrigan, the football bowl subdivision's going that way, expanding the playoff. 12, James? I, I don't know. What? You don't know? You want more? You I, want less? I want less, I think. Oh, okay. Well, you know. What do you think? Well, let, you know, an interesting point brought up by Nick Saban on it yesterday. He's like, nobody cares too much. These players, they're, they're bowing out of these, these bowl games. So why not make them all playoff games? Well, make them all mean something and you'll get everybody's best shot come, come postseason. I, I thought that that was an interesting way to look at it. My point is, though, when you get down to the end of a college football season, I don't know that there are 12 teams deserving to be in Okay, that okay. And it's different than basketball, by the way. Number 11, five They thought they had one on them here. You know what? That's, that, that, too, I think is a very good point because, you know, that let's say this this... 10th seed, you know, whoever that, that just sneaks in, and then you get a, you hit a couple teams that are banged up at the end of the year, and yeah, I I know it's, but I but I do like that it's expanding a little bit, and it's you know, I mean, here he talks about the ACC, and there was a while there where it felt like, gosh, is anybody but Clemson ever going to represent? And you've got a lot of that in college football. Fair catch from Davis. It's a 51-yard punt. 4.7 seconds of hang time. James, it's time for our Max performance. And it's brought to you by Z-Max. Devin Leary no, tying his career high. that's not Devin Leary. With four Come TD on. passes. No, it's not. It's Brennan Armstrong. <laughs> we just want to see if you're paying attention. All right. You know and what? you were. They're both, they're both, that's okay. they're both tough yep. as nails. I, and I they, would, got, they got those nice red beards going too, right? I would like to have either one of them as my quarterback. True, that's true. for sure. And, you know, and, and, and both of them are going to be player of the game. You know, many times throughout this season and Larry doing it not just with his arm not just with his legs buying time but with his legs running for touchdowns and yards here today uh, an outstanding performance and gets to shut it down early and rest up a little bit in this one ah, there, there we is. go that's the, the red beard brigade led by Devin Larry and Brennan Armstrong yeah but the numbers are correct and they're they're not 
outstanding. James, they're solid. They're exactly what he needed. And he did tie his career high with the four TD passes. Yep, and well, tied his career you know, rushing touchdowns right. coming in with That's the two on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And his first rushing TD, James, of 12 yards, he got hit three or four times on the way to the end zone. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, it kind of set the tone. Like, hey, I'm still your guy. We're not going anywhere. And we're going to get a, get that bad taste out of our mouths last week. We, we got the win, but it wasn't what we expected. So let's all get involved, and everybody got involved. Over 10 different receivers he threw to here today. And here's another big third and long for CSU. Isaiah Best, the backup quarterback, on the run and dropped near the 20. Now, we certainly did expect an NC State win, just based on the level of competition. And that's going to be 10-0 for Dave Dorn. The prior nine games were by an average of 21.4 points in those victories. This will be a little more lopsided with three minutes and change to go in the third. Gelb is into punt. Jalen Coit, demonstrative fair catch indication and made successfully at the 35 yard line after a punt of 43 yards. Next up for NC State, it's gonna be Texas Tech next Saturday at 7 o'clock. And don't forget, stick with us after the third quarter for the fourth, yeah. starring James Bates, who's played that role to critical acclaim <laughs> over the years. It's brought to you by CPI Security, protecting what's important. NC State protecting the home turf today, James. Really never in question. Yeah, and, and Jack Chambers in there, and a lot of those starters sitting over there with their ball caps on. Chambers diving mm. attempt inside the 20. Anthony Smith all-out effort, and the pass was just about on schedule for Smith. So close. Plenty of time, and Chambers launches it up there and oh man gosh beautifully thrown football and you know that's a, that's a tough catch and anytime you lay out like that it's tough to pull it back in but coulda shoulda that would have been another big explosive play to add to the list today smith has a 40-yard td grab to his credit this afternoon physical play near sideline mins it's an eight-yard run for Mims, and he earned every inch of it. So Texas Tech is next change, right? Next Saturday for this NC State program. They lead that overall series 4-1. to one. The last meeting, you go all the way back to 2003, and they won at home against Texas Tech 49-21. In 2 they played into overtime. NC State won that one 51-48. Out there, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was. T.A. McClendon rushed for five TDs. Phillip Rivers was the quarterback for NC State at the time. So they played some wild ball games, and they're going to crank it up again next Saturday. It'll be a fun one to watch. It's Lubbock, a Texas, James, the destination. Oh, have I been saying, are they... I thought they were at home next week. No, it is, it is home. Okay, okay, it is home. Okay, but Lubbock okay. is where Texas Tech okay. is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, it's home. I know where that is. I shoot. In my fact, dad used to co coach at Texas Tech. And, and this is the first of three straight home games. Okay. Charleston Southern, Texas Tech, and UConn, which is playing Syracuse today. And that game is in Connecticut. Stores Connecticut. Pressure there from Nick Bartolo. Senior from Tampa Gaither and enough pressure put on Chambers and, and a hit perhaps and gosh a ball that could have been picked off should have been picked off. Here in the secondary, Brandon Howard the linebacker in his drop. One twelve to go in the third. Gonna 
review that last play. Or, yeah, they must be looking at, at the hit on the quarterback because it was, it was definitely an incomplete pass. Here's another look at it, Bartolo. Well, if it's... Well, as the rule goes, and this is protecting Bartolo, this isn't protecting Chambers, but as the rule goes, that crown of that helmet, which is now the very top of the helmet, and then six inches out around, you're not allowed to lead with that. So... In addition to any forcible hit to the shoulder and neck right. and head area, yeah. right? Absolutely. But right. now that that hit on the quarterback, I would say, is you know, it's it's that's fair. It's it's in his chest, but it's what he hit with. So it's protecting not in this case the quarterback. It's protecting the defender. And again, since this is the second half of the game, this will be reviewed. All targetings are reviewed by the gotta, national committee. You got to see what you hit, right. and it's. And you know, and, and what it does, and I think that this rule, at, at first, when it first came about, like, no way, are you kidding me? This is, this is, how could this ever, you know, just be taught to use your head and hit it with, you know? But you know, you see it. These guys coming up now, they get it, and you don't see as many of these shots that can really have long-term effects, uh, you know, on the brain, and and, and, and so that's, I mean, you hate to see this. I'm just saying what the rule says. So. Yeah, and this year targeting could be appealed and reversed, and you don't have to sit out the first half of the following After game. Review, yep. There was no targeting on the play. Second down. Okay. Well, you like that call, right, James? Well, I do like. Because you said it was closer to the chest than. No, but no. What I'm saying, it didn't have anything to do with where he hit him. Okay. It's what he hit him with. He led with the top of his helmet. Okay. So it can it it can be, you know, a guy can hit someone like like in the ribs. But if he leads with the top of his helmet, then that can be a targeting call because they're just trying to get him to tackle safely. That is the number one goal of that rule, and they've done a good job with it. And I do like the call because, you know, here's this guy. He's a senior. Everybody's okay. You know, he don't want to miss any football. Just trying to make a play, and, you know, on the other side of the ball, they are making plays. Anthony Smith, 18 yards. Smith has a TD catch. Jordan Houston. Smith almost had another, didn't he? And yeah. He almost had that nice diving grab. He's got his third catch of the game. Delbert Mims also with a TD catch. Chris Toodle, back of the end zone, 27 yards. That was in the third quarter from Devin Leary. A spectator right now, seven yards on the previous play. Mims continuing to run hard. NC State approaching 200 yards on the ground in this game against Charleston Southern. Last year they were 13th in the conference in rushing. They were fifth in passing, averaging 288 per game, and total offense eighth at 415 per game. Coach Doran looking up at the scoreboard. Looks like we've got a timeout on the field. We're just trying to sync up the play clock and the game clock. And one, the play clock ran out before the game clock. I think. <laughs> there was a second difference. There was a one second difference. Well, where are you happen away over there here, you go. Bates? There you go. Oh. Play clock on the right and the red. Right. So that, that ran. So. Oh, it's man. My, be head, my head hurts. <laughs> Unless he did get the time out in. And, you know, right. like maybe that, that's what it was. He's, I think Doran's trying to figure it out, too. That's going to be the end of the third. Coach Dave Dorn of the NC State Wolfpack with a 48-3 lead over Charleston Southern. 48-3. NC State has the lead in the home opener.
And it's going to be 10-0 for Dave Dorn and home openers. Here in the fourth, Tom and James with you in the running game. Coming to the surface in this game against Charleston Southern James. And as we mentioned, not as strong as they wanted to a season ago, but today they're putting it on display. Yeah, and they've got that nice, healthy competition in the backfield. Jordan Houston, who had the unfortunate fumble on the goal line last week, fortunately in the win. You know, he's, he's back and he's hungry. Speaking of hungry, Devin Leary on the ground, showing you what a leader does. We've seen plenty of great action from Demi Sumo so far this year. Delbert Mims. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention these guys. Uh, Grant Gibson, Chandler Zavala, Anthony Belton, Tim McKay today, Dylan McMahon, Bryson Spees. The offensive line has been good. they got to cut down on the penalties, though. And that's 186 on the ground. And we'll thank you for watching the fourth. Brought to you by CPI Security and a quick message from them. Opening moments of the fourth quarter, 48 to three. NC State has the lead. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Lindsey Rowley on the sidelines and our outstanding ACC football production crew with you from Raleigh, North Carolina and Carter Finley Stadium. First down for the Wolfpack inside the 25. Julian Gray fights his way down to the 10. It'll be a pass play for 13 yards. And Gray, just a freshman out of Charlotte, has been more involved today in showing you why. Nice wheels on the edge. He gets over there, gets that corner turned. And he's got a couple of his buddies on the perimeter leading the charge. Look at Jack Chambers in that conversation with him yesterday. Maybe this is why I liked him so much. He said he just loves the swamp. His first game ever in college football was played in the swamp against the Florida Gators when he was at Charleston Southern. NC State in the CPI security. Red zone to the end zone. Back corner. Touchdown Wolfpack. Jalen Coit on the pass from Jack Chambers at 10 yards. Chambers coming in here off the bench and just zipping it around. He throws a pretty ball. You know, the, the one to Smith that was just off the fingertips early. This one in the corner. Graduate transfer out of Lilburn, Georgia. The fifth TD pass by the quarterbacks of NC State in the game this afternoon. 55 to three, Wolfpack. Chambers to Coit for the TD. NC State back in the end zone once again. Chambers chatting with Leary. Now he's got a TD toss in the game. They can smile about that. Leary had four of them prior to Chambers coming in. He wore the colors of Charleston Southern a season ago, so playing against his teammates from a couple years ago. In fact, Chambers came in when Malgren got hurt a couple of seasons ago, James, and he never left the starting position until leaving for Raleigh in a graduate season. Twelve different NC State receivers have caught footballs today, either from Chambers or Devin Leary. And five of those for touchdowns. Coit, the most recent touchdown recipient for the redshirt freshman from Shiraz, South Carolina. So glad that you've been with us for ACC football on a Saturday in Raleigh. Home opener for the Wolfpack after the great escape a week ago. And now it's a distant memory, James. Well, we have a second. Let's get a message from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro, powerful tools for any project with gas-like power without the gas. Fueled by PowerShare batteries to give you the power to outperform. Well, we're gearing up for fall. With, you know, we got these blowers and mowers and <laughs> we're ready to go, huh? Cleaning it up. It, it hit in September. It was great on college football Saturdays, that's for sure. And coming to Raleigh is always a treat. Next week, it's up to Massachusetts in the Commonwealth. Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, Alumni Stadium. 
Boston College hosting Maine out of the football championship subdivision. So of our first three games that we've called, the two of them have been in Commonwealths. That's true. Are there only two Commonwealths, is that right? I want to say Kentucky is also a Commonwealth, James. Okay, all right, so three. Uh, we'll keep the research staff on that for you. So if you win a, if you're a high school football team in Massachusetts, Virginia, I guess Kentucky, if that's the case, it, and you go all the way, I've never seen anybody called a Commonwealth champ. They're always the state champs. I've never seen it on anyone's bio. That's that part of the title. Commonwealth champ. Commonwealth champ. <laughs> Maybe it's because it doesn't I'm fit on the back of a letter jacket. It's cost too much <laughs> per letter. I'm from Massachusetts originally, James. We play for a Commonwealth champ. Oh, you did? I'm just making that oh. up to go on your uh, story. Uh, <laughs> Dang it. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as well. Wow, what a great job defensively. Nice ball put out there. Tayshawn Smith just stride for stride. He doesn't let any distance between him and the receiver. Feels that body. Got a feel for him. He just walls them off. It, it's a good throw, too. But it's excellent, excellent coverage. You're right there in phase, right in his hip pocket. That receiver's eyes get big, those hands go up. Snap that head around. So many times you see a guy won't snap his head around, he runs into him, and it's a penalty flag. Snap that head around, you get an interception, and that's exactly what happened with Tyler Baker Williams. Last week, he had a pick just like that. Great looking play. Coit dances down the 35. Maybe to the 48. The return was 13 yards from Coit. Cameron Smith had the tackle on special teams for the Bucks. 12.40 to go in the fourth. NC State leading Charleston Southern. I'm Lindsey Riley down on the sidelines. Well, quarterback Devin Leary seems to be done for the day after putting up some monster numbers, but he wasn't the only ACC quarterback to do so today. Getting a huge win at Vanderbilt. Wake Forest ends up getting the win 45 to 25. A lot of talk revolving around their quarterback, Sam Hartman, coming back from injury. Man, did he show up. Guys, he went 18 for 27, 300 yards, and four touchdowns. Awesome. That's that's great to see, Lindsay, and thank you for that update. Is you know, was glad to see ACC on top of that ACC SEC matchup and glad to see Wake winning it. Uh, but also was curious as to how he had done. Is you know, these guys not only great quarterbacks and, and teammates, but I mean, when, when we get a chance to sit down with them in Charlotte at ACC Media Days, just great guys, so much fun, guys like Devin Leary and Sam Hartman. It's always, always a, a, a treat, one of the highlights of the summer, and was really, really bummed for a guy which, you know, kept under wraps a lot of exactly what was going on with him over there in Winston-Salem, but Glad that he's through it and glad that he's back out there playing ball for Wake Forest. And you know, and they shoot in his absence in week one, they, they look pretty pretty good without him, Tom. Win against VMI in week one. They'll play Liberty next week. And then September 24th, a home game against the Clemson Tigers. Wake, winners of the Atlantic a season ago, James, when they played Pitt in the championship game in Charlotte, North Carolina, ending the six-year run of the Clemson Tigers as the Atlantic champs. Coastal always a toss-up. I think a lot of people are looking at Miami, perhaps, this season. James. They always are at this time of the right? year, though. They always are. I don't know. It just came to yeah. mind. Well, no, no, no. You're you're right, and, and, and justifiably so. They've always got some players, but they they haven't been able to to finish and, and haven't lived up to expectations. Oh man, that was a pop. That comes off of Morris. That's Pudge. Still flying sideline to sideline, the one they call punch, uh, Garrett Sagan, the middle linebacker. And hey, you know Pat Narduzzi's calling me right now, James. It's like, what about us? We are the defending champs in the Coastal. True. <laughs> and, and, and on top of that, they've got a big one today after the big win over West Virginia. They've got the Tennessee Volunteers coming to town. Welcome to the football game, MJ Morris. That's right, a team they beat last year. 
And then the following week, Pitt has Western Michigan James. That's on the road. We did the home game. Oh, Pitt yeah. lost to Western Michigan last year. Despite being the champs of the ACC. It was the old Pitt, though, right? That, you know, they, that was back. Kenny Pickett was the quarterback, though. That's, you know, and, and Kenny right. Pickett had a down day, and it just shows even these, these stars, you know, it, uh, out there and not ready to go and ball falls a funny way here and there and man it can it can turn into a disaster for some of these teams and and that was that was perfect example you know there in Pittsburgh Western Michigan comes in and just goes away with the win. Kenny Pickett was on hand for the West Virginia game, James, in Pittsburgh, where they unfurled the championship banner in the ACC. He didn't have to go far for his professional <laughs> career, obviously. <laughs> Same building. He didn't. They're going to check on Morris in that tent right there. As he was hit, his, his helmet came flying off, and he didn't just leave for you know, the one play with his helmet coming off, but we want to make sure that he's okay after the big hit by Sega. So Chambers coming back in. NC State fans can celebrate a victory and a 2-0 record. That's another win at home, James, too. That's 11 straight at home. Second longest home winning streak in school history. The longest was 16. That was back in the early 70s when a guy named Luke Holtz was the head coach mm -hmm. here at NC State. And again, the longest in the country right now belongs to the Clemson Tigers at 34 in a row. No. Zane Vance, his defense continuing to play. I mean, the hustle plays. A lot of these starters that are still out there competing, and they get a turnover on downs. And big hit by Sega. Cameron Smith on the defense right there. I'm not sure what they're stopping here. Boots with the fur. <laughs> You've got your boots on with the fur. You should show those next time we're on camera. 55 to 3. Boots with the fur. Here in the fourth with 9.43 to go in the home opener. And that home winning streak for NC State. Right now it's at 10. It's got to go to 11. Here are the other teams in the nation. And way out in front, James, the Clemson Tigers, who have Furman today at home at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, so Clemson Tigers, he's probably going to mark that one up to 35. I mean, 35 straight wins at home. And I think in the 90s, you know, those Coach Spurrier days and Danny Warfel and those Gators were playing some good ball when we were a part of 36 straight wins at home. I, I think that's what the number wow. was. And then what did Coach say about that when you got number 36? Shoot, come to the swamp, only Gators get out alive. I guess that's what he said. He actually on my recruiting trip. Do you have to wear a buck spray at the swamp, by the way? That's what Utah thought. <laughs> that is true. From what I understand, that's it's just true. a rumor going no, around. No, no, that uh, that's, that's a true rumor. That was kind of funny. There, some Utah fans parking at our. Uh, our daughter's uh, house there by campus. She, she's a swimmer back at UF and was parking some cars out. They got out and started spraying themselves with bug spray. And they're all looking at him like, what's going on? Like, well, we're going to the swamp. Don't we need bug spray? And, and I'm not kidding either. Normally, it, yes. It seems like such a made-up story, but uh, <laughs> it's the truth. As long as the meatloaf is good, everything else is good, too. <laughs> Sliding near midfield. And sliding in safely. Isaiah Bess got nine. So if you're NC State, James, you certainly had expectations of winning this game without question. Are you back on track per se after what happened last week and now the result this week? I, I think so. I, I think that, you know, there are still, you know, Devin, Devin Leary, you look at his numbers, like you said, he, he wasn't as crisp and as, you know, as perfectly sharp as, as he had, we've seen him at times, but he was really, really good. And it's, you know, it's just a, a step forward in the right direction. All these guys getting involved and in, in, in feeling like part of the, oh, careful, feeling like part of this victory. <laughs> no flag ever come there. Okay. Let me make sure. Let me, Kobe Johnson, Kobe Johnson. 
taking out some aggression there on the sidelines. Lucky he didn't get a flag there. But but I think, you know, a, a few things here. You you've got you continued your your streak of turnovers. I think is huge defensively. You you really played well as a defensive unit, and, and it's without Peyton Wilson. And yeah, you've got a ton of good linebackers, so you're going to be fine. But you'll get him back. I it's when. They talk about it in baseball hitting. It's 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 infectious. It's it's the same with turnovers in football. It's so much fun to create turnovers and to create havoc with these offenses and, and to rally with your your boys. And that's why that's why these turnover chains that they no longer have down in Miami, but the turnover bone that they have here. I think it's so much fun because it's like it's it's such a. a such a fun thing to rally around as a team. You know, the, the dunk at, at Pittsburgh. Uh, turnovers are huge, and the fact that they kept that streak going, and they kept, you know, forcing those turnovers. And today, they capitalized. That was one of their goals, was to capitalize and take advantage, play complimentary football when you get a turnover, and make them pay, score points off of it. And here's another one right on cue, huh? Number three in the game for NC State. Thank you, Jalen Frazier. That's how you help a guy. See, that is complimentary football and then some. Complimenting the booth as well to help us tell a story. See, look at it. Look at how it, there's Isaiah Moore. There's these guys, you know, out there patting them on the back. I mean, that's what's fun. That's what it's all about is to celebrate with your buddies. And they gave them the bone. And these are guys, too, that, that you know, for a large chunk, they may be contributing to this great season because there's so much depth and so much talent on the scout team. And he's got the red bone. He'll sign it. What they do is if you get a turnover, you get to sign your name on it. And at the end of the year, whoever has signed it the most gets to take that bone home. And last year, Drake Thomas uh, took the turnover bone home. But, you know, it's funny. Last week, if you remember, Tom, last week we had Virginia. And Tony Elliott, he said something before the game, and you kind of take it for granted. He's like, you know, I want these guys to come on and off the field with some energy and stuff. And they had a, a turnover on downs. On fourth down, they shut them down. And they kind of... They kind of just eased their way off the field, and Tony Elliott went sprinting out there to try to kind of teach him how to celebrate. I mean, that's that's what you celebrate about. That's why you're playing is for those moments. And it's great to see this defense. All the starters pop up, Lindsey Rally, and they rally around their buddies. It's really great to see a unit, isn't it? Is it fun it down there? It absolutely is. As you said, Drake Thomas won the bone last year. I spoke with Drake earlier this week, and he told me their defense really takes pride in bringing out the turnover bone, mainly because they want to get the ball back to their offense to put more points on the board. He said, we got to do our job so they can do theirs. Right, Batesy? <laughs> yeah, and, and then they do theirs, and that's, that's the thing, too. Last week, Lindsey, they had two turnovers and zero points off of those turnovers. That's when you really put a hurting on a team, when you can turn it over and then make them pay, just like this right here. Uh-oh! NC State already has 10 points off of the two previous turnovers, and that play went for 26 yards. Mims again. But Mims has gotten a lot of action back there, and he's he's been running hard. Excellent day for Delbert Mims, sophomore from Indianapolis. Over 500 yards of total offense for NC State. Could have been more. Drop it to 30. So we're just under six minutes to go in the fourth. We can also tell you that Miami posted a victory over Southern Miss, James. We mentioned the Wake Forest win. Both of those teams are ranked. Miami's 15, Wake Forest 23rd in the country. Duke goes on the road, beats Northwestern James and North Carolina at Georgia State. Tar Heels are 3-0 with a 35-28 win. Yeah, how about Mike Elko, the head coach at Duke? Yeah. New sheriff in town, and, and they're playing with some pop. One of the four new head coaches in the league this year. Taking over for David Cutcliffe. Class personified the way he built that program up. And now Elko trying to continue the tradition at Duke. A couple of wins to start the year. Are the Knolls off today? Is that right? The Florida State? Yeah, because they played the first, the zero, week zero. Wow, what, what a win for them. And 
Well, the LSU blocked extra point to win that game. In their most recent game, they beat Duquesne in week zero. They're off, and then they travel to Louisville for a game this coming week. That would be on a Friday night. Yeah, and they get Louisville, Louisville off a, of their win. Louisville had a great win yesterday against UCF after losing to Syracuse in the first week of the season. They got dominated at the Dome, so it's going to be an awesome season, James, in the <laughs> ACC. I mean, there's so much to talk about, so many teams with so much promise. Who knows who will be in Charlotte in early December for that ACC championship game, Bank of America Stadium. Hit the defending champ. We saw one of the first-year head coaches last week in Tony Elliott get his first win of his head coaching career. He came over from Clemson as the offensive coordinator for many years and part of those two national championship teams, and they got a win against Richmond in week one. Virginia's on the road at Illinois today. Well, let's take a timeout from Raleigh. Four and a half minutes to go towards a victory for NC State. Minutes to go in our final quarter of play in the home opener for the NC State Wolfpack. And now time for He's Built Tough, brought to you by Wrangler. It's Devin Leary. Who else would it be? Here comes Wrangler and he's one tough customer. There used to be, that was the jingle for the commercial in the 80s. And Devin Leary is without a doubt one tough customer and a great leader. They love him around here. He's, he just oozes with confidence. His confidence is infectious. And these, these guys love him. And he's, he's such an incredible leader to everybody on this team. You know, Sumo coming in, the, the, the new running back. It's, you know, trying to kind of, uh, after last year playing just as a special teams guy hey look you need to learn this offense helping the young guys helping the guys that have been there forever uh, Devin Leary so special to this offense led by offensive coordinator Tim Beck and he's got a lot of weapons to spread it around to and they did just that today and I believe 12 different receivers catching balls between him and Jack today and he he does he gets the toughness vote anytime out there especially with that first touchdown run Twisting and turning, taking a couple shots and diving into the end zone for the first touchdown of the day. Three rushes for 20 yards and a couple of the TDs for Devin Leary. Runs of 12 and two yards. And James, he hit 14 different receivers. NC State utilized 14 different receivers during the course of the afternoon. Getting a little dreary now here in Raleigh, but the victory has been secured. Perhaps it, the work was done after the first quarter as NC State had a halftime lead of 38 to nothing, led 10 nothing after the first quarter, then went out to the 38 nothing lead. A lone field goal of 48 yards for Charleston Southern. Their only points. Four TD passes for Leary, and that ties his career high on the afternoon. And the defense. Also allowing just that field goal and a loss of two on the previous play for Dave Doran. Who just smiled, by the way. Uh, I saw we got it on sure. tape. Roll we got it back. on tape. Roll it back. Oh, no, I saw it. It was more of a smirk. Yeah, Craddock there blowing up his blocker to go back there and make the play. And In all honesty, James. I was a little worried about our meetings and what sort of mood there would be. You will see. That's a smile. Look at that. That is a now, smile. He smiled when he met Lindsey <laughs> Rowley. He wasn't so thrilled about me and Bates being there, but, you know, <laughs> it was a good meeting. It was a very productive meeting. Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator, to his left. And we had a great talk with the coaches, but they all had the same tone, right, James? It was guarded. It was thankful. It was... Ooh, big sigh of relief from Greenville, North Carolina, and now you, you come back and you get the job done today in convincing fashion, as was expected. And then you crank it up a notch. We're taking it up a notch next week, James. Texas Tech is coming to town. It's going to be a 7 Eastern start. 
I don't know why they don't like afternoon games. The two that we've yeah. done over the last four years have both been wins yeah. against Furman and now today against Charleston Southern. Yeah. And, and nice wins at that. And, you know, as you look at their upcoming games here, uh, we mentioned Texas Tech coming to town and UConn, and then they go on the road and shoot even Florida State's a little bit better. And Syracuse up at the, in the Carrier Dome, even even when they're not playing their best football, which it seems like Robert and I has left Virginia and anyway, after week one anyway, has them playing a little bit better offensively. Uh, so it, it's it's never easy out here. And, and, you know, just to finish up on our meetings and with Doran, one thing that he did say that I talked about off the top that, it, you know, I, I'm going to write it down and, and share it with my family, with my kids, because, it, you know, it, 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 it really hit me, man, a lot. Is like an underachiever is what he said. An underachiever is the worst thing that anybody can call you. And, you know, and, and to not go out there and use the talents that you're blessed with, you, you know, and to go out there and to just kind of go through the motions when you when you have talents and not just on the football field but in life is uh, it's really interesting. I, I, I like that quote. And... Uh, I'm going to have to pass it along to the Bates kids and let them know they don't want them to be, be their best at all times. Well, we know our production crew overachieves each and every week here hours before the start of the game, hours after the game, and might have to contend with a little bit of drizzle moving into the area all of a sudden, James. Some great clouds, pewter gray skies rolling in to the Raleigh area. We avoided the rain for the better part of the day, though, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Not so much anymore. Raindrops on the lens and falling at a steady pace at the moment. Well, Lindsay Rowley with her, her ninja uniform on that she wore today. It's a, hopefully that's not getting wet and ruined. Mm. Hit at the end of the play there, James. Ooh, nice pop right as he's going out of bounds and you know it's, it's it is good to see you know both sides of the ball in, in this in this second half this this Charleston Southern team coach Denson squad that, yeah licking your wounds going back after a, a 55 to 3 loss is what it looks like it'll end with but they they continued to fight it, it may not have always meant success but they they didn't fold up the tent and just let this NC State Offense run through him in the second half. Not sure what's going on down there right now. Huh. Something with substitution. But they there we go. They just they just needed an extra guy to Get in there and block. So next week we're going to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Alumni Stadium from Maine and Boston College. Maine out of the Colonial Athletic Association, BC. They're part of the lone conference game today, James, against Virginia Tech. That's in Blacksburg, and they lost their first game of the season to Rutgers. Yeah. Well, you talk about a big one between them and Virginia Tech today. Two teams that suffered losses in their openers. And Jerkovic, that's, that's one of those great quarterbacks in the ACC. We had him a few times last year, and, and he was fun to watch. How about the game Jerkovic had at Georgia Tech? When he ran for three touchdowns in the game. And that was coming off of a shoulder injury, too, James. Mm -hmm. A season ago for Phil Jerkovic. Transfer from Notre Dame in the BC program. He's just one of the group of quarterbacks in this league. Garrett Schrader at Syracuse, along with all the guys that we mentioned at halftime. Vernon Armstrong. Devin Leary here at NC State. Tyler Van Dyke at Miami. Dracovic at BC. Keaton Slovis, the transfer for Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, Sam Hartman coming back today. We could do a whole show on this. <laughs> we haven't done enough TV today. <laughs> Past 4 o'clock on the East Coast. We, we kind of have in the second <laughs> half a little bit, maybe. You know, it, 
What about Drake May? Freshman quarterback for him, yeah. North Carolina. And they got a win today, 35-28 at Georgia State. So Autry Denson's team, it was an uphill climb all the way. But they're not afraid of the big time competition, as we told you, playing Georgia at ECU last season. And they'll gain some good reps and experience from this one as they continue on in their season in the Big South. For the Buccaneers from North Charleston, South Carolina at Charleston Southern. I didn't James. have it written down, Tom, but I wanted to make sure. Uh, Brian Mitchell's the cornerback coach. Um, you know, again, we just saw another play. You know, good position by these corners. These, these are well-coached corners, and Dave Dorn's a defensive guy, so he's going to have good defensive coaches as assistant coaches, and Brian Mitchell, one of them. His corners look good today, and Dave Dorn's whole team look pretty good today as they get ready to try to move to 3-0 and next week after a 2-0 and start. Yeah, they'll host Texas Tech. Dave Dorn's team has the victory, 55 to three as we close this one out the raindrops of Raleigh North Carolina shaking the hand of Autry Denson the head coach of Charleston Southern Dave Dorn his 66th career victory second most in school history don't forget to join us next Saturday night 7 30 in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Chestnut Hill as the Boston College Eagles host the Black Bears from Maine. We thank you so much for watching our presentation of ACC football for James Bates, Lindsey Rowley, and our outstanding production crew. I'm Tom Wormy, saying so long from Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the Wolfpack over the Bucks.